Okay, we're recording. Thank you. Good evening. It's November 14th, 2022. Based on the revisions to the open meeting law, we are allowed to meet both virtually and in person. This meeting is accessible in real time by Zoom, by phone, and on Amherst Media, and you are also welcome into the town room. Given that we have a quorum of the council present, I'm calling the November 14th, 2022 special town council meeting to order at 6.30 p.m. I'll call upon each counselor by name. Please unmute, say present, and then mute your mic again. And I'll come back if I'm missing somebody. Uh, so Shalini Baumellan, I don't see her yet. Pat DeAngelis. Present. Anna Devlin Goth here. Present. Lynn Griesmer is present. Mandy Jo Hannity. Present. Anika Lopes. Present. Michelle Miller. Present. Dorothy Pam. Here. Pam Rooney. Present. Kathy Shane. Here. Did that work? Yep. Andy Steinberg. Present. Jennifer Taub. Present. Alicia Walker. Here. And Shalini Baumel. Present. Thank you. Uh, let me just mention at this point, there are 12 people in the audience. Um, there is no chat room for this meeting. If you have technical issues, please make sure that you let Athena and me know, and we'll decide what to do at that time. With regard to announce that the on the screen, you can see how to join the council meeting. You can also see how to join by phone and how to make public comment. There'll be two public comment periods today, one general public comment, and then one later on after we begin discussion, discussing possible motions. Um, so are there any announcements at this time that anybody is wanting to say? Let me just mention, uh, Next week, next Monday night, 6.30, we have our public forum on the FY24 budget. And at seven o'clock, we will begin the regular meeting. We posted at seven, but frankly, that meeting will not begin until we're done with the public forum. On December 5th, we'll do a joint meeting, uh, which is the state of the town and a regular town council meeting. And you can see the committee meetings on the calendar. With that, I'm going to ask if people would like to make public comment to please raise your hand at this time. So I'm calling for public comment at this time. Okay, we will have another public comment period right now. There are 15 people in the audience, but no one has raised their hand for public comment. We have two action items tonight. The first action is the appointment of the human resource director. I'm gonna call on Paul Bachman to just speak briefly to the candidate and then on Anika Lopes to uh, share with us the town services and outreach committee report. Paul. Uh, thank you, Lynn. So Melissa Ludici uh, Walker has been offered the position of uh, human uh, resources director for the town of Amherst, and she has accepted. The town services and outreach committee uh, reviewed the um, appointment on Thursday, and uh, Anika will respond to that. The um, uh, Melissa brings a lot of experience. She has a, a, a practicing attorney. She has a master's in social work. Uh, she has a bachelor's degree from the University of Massachusetts. She is currently the HR director uh, for the um, Pitt, for um, Berkshire Community College and um, has been working in private practice as an employment law attorney for about 10 years before that. She re-interviewed uh, um, for our team multiple times. So we really put the put um, this group through a pretty detailed process. Um, our committee was very strong. Uh, Pamela Nolan-Young, our DEI director, chaired the committee. Um, everyone who interviewed her 
um, including the subsequent interviews that uh, I had with the temporary HR director after the fact recommended Melissa over the other candidates. I think she's going to be a really a dynamic addition to our staff. Um, Pamela is really excited about being able to work with her. I think we're really fortunate to, to have her as a candidate. Um, and so I hope that you will welcome her to our community as, as, um, as I do. Um, Anika? Yes, so we also had a, um, a very nice discussion um, in the TSO meeting and the vote to appoint, um, to rather refer that the council appoint was unanimous. Okay, uh, thank you. And so with that, I'm going to place a motion that we, do we, we don't appoint, we approve the appointment of, and please state her name again. Melissa. Melissa's the easy part. Uh, Lodici, Lodici Walker. Melissa Lodici Walker to the position of human resource director for the town of Amherst. Is there a second? Second, Rooney. Okay. Is there any other further comments or questions? Uh, Mandy Jo? Um, I just wonder whether we wanted the standard motion that was in the packet last week. That's fine. I, let me, I let me quickly go find that. And I, I, I found it. So I can just okay. read what that was. Why don't was. you read the standard um, motion? That's that's what I was missing. In, in accordance with Charter Section 2.11a to approve the town manager appointment of Melissa Ladici Walker as the human resources director as filed with the town clerk on November 4, 2022. And I'll second the motion. How's that? Or that's my motion. That's and who wants to second it? <laughs> Pam, thank you. That's the actual motion. And thank you very much, Mandy Joe, for quickly finding that. Um, are there any other comments or questions? Seeing none, uh, we are going to move to a vote. Shalini Balnell? Yes. Pat DeAngelis? Aye. Anna Devlin Gothier? Aye. Lynn Griesmerson? Aye. Mandy Jo Hanneke? Aye. Anika Lopes? Aye. Michelle Miller? Aye. Dorothy Pam? Yes. Pam Rooney? Aye. Kathy Shane? Yes. Andy Steinberg? Aye. Jennifer Taub? Aye. Alicia Walker? Aye. It's unanimous, and we look Thank forward you. to meeting her. Um, so let me uh, just, um, we are now going to move to the various motions that uh, we have. And I'll explain that in a moment. But prior to introducing that whole section, I'm calling upon the town manager, Paul Bachman, who has requested an opportunity to speak. Thank you, Lynn, and members of the town council. So as I reflected back of the past weeks and months um, since we first learned of the incident on July 5th, I want to acknowledge errors that I regret both on that evening and more importantly, in the days and weeks since then. While I typically refrain from speaking about matters where there exists a risk of litigation at this point, I feel the need to address this matter important. I feel that this matter is important enough to contribute. Um, and it will hopefully in the process hope to contribute to the long process of building trust. First, I think there's agreement that the police officer's statement to the minors regarding their individual rights was incorrect. The second officer on the scene recognized this immediately and corrected it for which I am grateful. The first officer has acknowledged his use of those words and has said that he regrets them. The police chief addressed the matter through the town's established personnel and collective bargaining processes, consistent with his obligations. Now our established processes are important, but is, there is more to a community than process and obligations. I wanna talk about what we didn't do that night and in the following weeks and months. We acknowledged a mistake, but did not apologize to those whose trust we had violated. In failing to do so, we left the impression that this mistake was acceptable in our community. It was not, it is not. Our failure, my failure, took a negative situation and made it worse. Much time has passed, but that failure still must be corrected. To the youth present that evening, I apologize. You should never have a moment's doubts about your rights or about the obligation of the police department 
to protect those rights. In all the town services, we need to approach youth with the same courtesy and professionalism with which we approach older adults. Second, I want to apologize to the police department. I have great respect for the department and its officers. They're professional, dedicated, and work every day and night to make the right decision in difficult situations. My failure to act quickly cast doubt on the department. That was unfair. Our concern about what occurred on July 5th should not be used to undermine the value of the department's important service to the town. Third, I want to apologize to the town council, the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee, and the Human Rights Commission. You have devoted significant time, energy, and emotion to moving us toward a safer and more just community. Your challenge, our challenge, is daunting, but, of all, but above all else, so success requires trust and respect for the members who bring their own experiences and doubts to the table. I can see that my failure to acknowledge our error on this issue may have contributed to feelings of mistrust, and I truly regret that. Lastly, I apologize to the larger community. Amherst is a caring community committed to progress. You recognize that no one is perfect, but when public officials make a mistake, you rightly expect us to admit it, take corrective action and learn from it and become better. Moving forward, I will be more explicit about how I am learning from this incident and how the town will improve from the lessons learned. I'm reaching out to each individual involved in this incident. For the youth, I would like to meet with you individually with your parents or if you are willing, if you, and if you are willing to help me understand more about the incident and its impact on you. I, along with the DEI director and police chief are available to meet each of you to understand your experiences, reactions and ideas for restorative work. I hope you'll take me up on that. As our DEI director reminds us, as a community, we must have the courage to admit a mistake and act to correct it. The strength to do the hard work of reconciliation and the capacity to forgive and show grace. In offering my apologies, belated they may be, I ask that we continue to work together as we move forward to do the important work that is before us. I thank you for the opportunity to say that. Thank you, Paul. We're going to continue to move on. Um, there is a motion on the floor, but let me explain how we're going to proceed with the evening, okay? Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Got it. Um, so I'm going to ask the clerk of the council to place the motions that are on the table up on the screen. The motion that is on the table is not the one that was originally printed in the agenda, and that has been corrected as of this afternoon. So the motion that is on the table is, in fact, the one that you can see right now. Okay. Since then, various people have submitted either amendments to this motion or they've submitted new motions. And I want to make sure that everybody who has submitted something speaks to it, doesn't make the motion, but speaks to it so that we understand what the variety of motions are that are on the that may come on the floor. People may also withdraw motions and other people may still make a motion because that is allowed as long as the motion is relevant to the discussion on the floor. Okay. So um, with that, let me ask if there are any questions from the council. All right, Kathy. Lynn, just so I understand, um, it looks like the original motion may have been amended by the, well, it's amended twice in a similar way. As we go through it, will we know who did the amendments? Yes. Are there any other questions? Pam. I might as well clarify, since there were several uh, different things in the packet, we have a proposed amendment number one, 
which is was page three of seven. We have a proposed amendment number two, which was page five of seven. We have a proposed amendment three, which was page six of seven. And then we have a substitute or additional motion, which was on page seven of seven. Am I looking at the right document? That is the correct document. Athena, would you like to show that document so people know that that's the document we're dealing with? So this is, as Councillor, as Pam just said, this is the proposed note, proposed amendment one. And in the text, it shows what has been deleted or added in red. And then at the end of that, uh, if as we go through it, you'll see the motion written with all those red marks taken out. Okay. Then we go on to a motion proposed amendment two. Again, taking the motion that's on the floor, this proposal shows various places where things have been deleted or added. And then at the end of it shows in a, without all the red marks, what the motion would actually be. Okay. Then we have a substitute motion, which is um, to some extent picks up on the previous motion, but doesn't include all the red marks. Okay. And then we have a substitute or additional motion. I believe that this is an additional motion and not a substitute motion, but we can debate that if and when we get to that. Okay. Uh, Dorothy. Um, I, I tell you the thought of dealing with this pile of motions, I printed them all out, I read them, I made notes on them, is to me such a, a daunting task that I just don't want to do it. Um, I feel that the town manager's apology was heartfelt, was complete, and I feel that We've already heard that other things are in motion. Some of the some of the things that have been mentioned in these mo um, motions, such as uh, working on the oversight board, we're, we're told that that is in fact uh, on the plate of the new DEI director. Um, I believe that the police are reviewing their protocols. Uh, I I just the thought of trying to keep track. I mean, I've got all of these with marks and stuff. I I really. I don't see how it gets us anywhere except to be a dithering, confusing council, which the public cannot follow. So I, I am kind of hoping that we don't do this. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other comments? Kathy? I just want to echo Dorothy's appreciation for Paul's apology. Um, both the depth at which you went and also admitting it would have been better sooner. Um, I think as a parent, I can think of many times that as the person in power, when I thought about it a month later, I should have said, I'm sorry, really earlier. Um, and it takes, it takes um, a lot of humanity to do it. So I just want to thank you because it really sets the tone for tonight and also for moving forward. So thank you. Okay. Are there any other comments or questions before we move to the motions? Anna? Sure. So I uh, I appreciate, Paul, what you were saying earlier. And I, I guess I don't agree with Dorothy on that's enough. I think we as a council have a huge responsibility here in identifying what things we need to champion. Um, and while I recognize that many of these will need to be uh, the initiative of individual counselors or, or a few counselors stepping up with motions that need to be made. Um, I, I do not think that we should stop at this point. I think there's a lot left to do. I think we've started, we've, we've scratched the surface of this, uh, of, of, I'm mixing metaphors here, but of this road that we need to travel and uh, to stop now would be a, a, a huge mistake. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this discussion and to voting on some motions today. Jennifer. Um, uh, Dorothy, please correct me because I, I don't mean to put words in anyone's mouth, but I, I don't think you and Dorothy maybe are that far off because I think what I heard Dorothy saying is to maybe get to your motion of what we're going to do instead of 
debating all the different language changes. I'm not advocating for one or the other, but I think that's, I think your motion was getting to some action. I think what maybe Dorothy was trying to avoid was getting into debating each sentence of every mm -hmm. amendment. Right. And I hear that. Thank you for that clarification. All right. Are there any other comments? Shalini? Um, can you clarify what are we taking each motion? Because when I read through them, I felt there were at least six uh, action items that every, that all the motions and amendments had in common. So I'm just wondering if that's a good place to start is we start with what are the commonalities across all the motions and and then they can be, I don't know, did you have a process in mind how we're gonna go about it? Yeah, I do have a process in mind and it's the one that you, we followed that's basically prescribed by Robert's Rules of Order. And that is you have to deal with a motion on the table if there's a motion on the table, you can move to amend and friendly amendments are also accepted. But at some point you have to then either vote the amendments and then you come back to the original motion and vote or not vote it down or vote it to approve. Athena, I'm calling on you because I always and we always respect your opinion. Thank you. I just wanted to note that we now have 30 people in the audience, and they might like to know that we've already been through general public comment, but there will be another public comment period later in the meeting. Thank you. Okay. Are there other questions about the process for the evening? All right. Then um, the motion that is in front of you was actually made by myself and seconded by Anna Devlin Gothier. Uh, on your motion sheet, we're gonna now go up to the next motion. On your motion sheet is this same motion with a lot of red lines and a lot of things added. Instead of going through each one of them, what I'd like to do is tell you in general, what I tried to do, because this is my redlining all over the place. Um, so um, when I spoke to this motion on November 1st, I gave you various reasons for it. And I have since submitted revisions based on the discussion to some extent and also the attorney's opinion. I removed AHRA as part of the committees involved they have a significant charge with a deadline. And at that point, the AHRA finishes their term. I believe it is important for them to focus on their work. And I will speak to the role of the CSSJC and HRC in a moment. While I modified the language in the motion, it still includes items regarding community vision, creation of a resident oversight board with possible assistance from a consultant, reviewing public safety protocols, continuing to develop protocols for CRESS, and various training options and a communication plan. I eliminated all language related to a justice compensation fund because I do not support spending time on this. And I eliminated exploring options for a youth empowerment center because I believe the council should discuss this further before staff spend much more time on it. The amendment includes uh, a much more defined role and timeline for CSSJC and HRC, as well as the town manager. However, please note, while the timeline is short, something we may wish to change, we are asking for a report on actions and or progress from the town manager, and we are asking for written advice from CSSJC and HRC. And so if you'll go to the clean motion, which is the amendment, that is what it now looks like when you take all these corrections, additions, and subtractions out of it. And we'll give people a moment to look at that. And then we'll go on to the next one, which I believe is one that was submitted by Mandy Johanneke. Okay. 
Andy Joe, please. Um, so basically, mine does very similar things to what Lynn did, which was I took a combination of three of the proposed amendments from the last set, um, read the attorney's opinion and said, can I combine these? <laughs> and so that's what I attempted to do. Um, I mean, I can explain everything, but that's that was basically what I attempted to do was to try and combine the thoughts of, I think it was the first three from the last packet into this one, being cognizant of the advice from the attorney. And so certain things were removed because of that advice. Right. Um, Michelle, do you have a question? I do, yeah. Um, we've now referenced the attorney and the attorney's opinion multiple times, or at least a couple times here. And I'm just wondering for the public's purposes, is that opinion in the packet for tonight? I, I haven't had a chance to look. It, it did get added at the last minute. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes, I realized it wasn't in there and it would be referenced, yes. Kathy. Uh, I just have a question of you, Mandy. Since I didn't do a word for word read, is there anything in your list? And I can see one of your items has four things in it, as opposed to a numerator list that isn't in the revised Lynn list. Um, so just uh, if I try to, I can I can crosswalk several, but I just is your impression they're basically the same, just formatted differently? Um, the biggest difference was I left the continue exploring options for youth empowerment center in there i would say that's the biggest difference because my understanding is there's already work ongoing and so that number four is to just continue that that work um and then i did not have the big explanation that lynn does at the end about where reports go and when they have to be available and all thank you okay shalini yeah, so I'm um I I feel that we do need to have a discussion about the youth empowerment. I personally am in complete favor of that and support that, but I feel like we need to keep that separate from the discussion around July 5th incident and which is why I am not in favor of including the youth empowerment center in 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 this discussion. And uh and the uh, that, that was a comment and then I was curious to uh, about the what you had in mind when you said proposed to the town council a racial healing and reconciliation plan for community visioning with a focus on public safety and social justice. Are you asking that of? Yeah, in amendment one, and I right. guess amendment right. two also so there is a community visioning plan and why i ask that is because i really do believe in um the competence and skills of our dei to director and department to put forward before us and my understanding is she's already organizing some healing workshops and whatnot so i Again, I just feel anything we're putting, it takes time for people to look through, study, and then implement, and then come back to us. And, and so it just takes that, takes time away from what we we want them to really do, which my feeling and what I'm hearing from everyone that we're all on board is we want a residence oversight board. You know, what happened on July 5th, there are a lot of uh, different versions we're hearing and the youth are not able to come forward or don't want to come forward because of legitimate reasons. And the only way we can prevent that from happening in the future is that there is a process and a committee and a board in place so that the youth can address that. And so, you know, those are the reasons I feel like putting additional things just because, I don't know, because we think it's a good idea mm -hmm. is taking away from what that focus that is needed to get the residents oversight board so if that's why i wanted to hear what your reasoning was and what your visioning was to put that there i'll be glad to um my my list initially started with the demands from cssjc 
And I included, and those demands in many, but not all instances were derived from the CSWG's recommendations. And so in my motion, I included those that either I thought we were already working on or it picking up on. And I excluded those that either I don't support or I um, feel that the council should have more discussion about because of the enormous commitment of resources that they would take. And I really don't want to see the staff uh, spending time on things that we're not willing to commit those resources to. So the visioning, for example, comes straight out of the CSWG report and straight out of the demands from the CSSJC. And that's why I put it there. Amanda Jo, you built on that motion, so you may have something else you want to say. Yeah, I, I built on that motion. I removed the wording of um, recon racial I don't know what, what's your wording, um, racial healing and rec reconciliation plan and just went with community visioning. Mm -hmm. um, throughout these conversations, as well as others that I've seen happen in CRC and not just within CRC, but from comments received by CRC as it relates to um, rental permitting and rental housing and neighborhood issues. Um, I I think we have some areas that need discussed as a community regarding public safety. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the one example I've mentioned before that I will mention again now, um, and it's potentially a minor one, it might be a major one, is surrounding noise complaints where we hear from a lot of residents and neighborhoods that they want more enforcement and more ticket writing of that. Yet during these conversations with regard to this particular incident, we have heard um, potential requests that noise complaints should be responded to in a less um, police type manner. Um, and so I, I think that my thought on a community visioning plan that would focus would, would really get down to those issues and, and figure out where we want as a community our public safety resources put. Um, that includes CRESS resources, that includes um, APD resources and AFD resources, um, while talking to a much broader swath than we've yet talked to in any one situation where we've talked to people. And we have talked to people, but we've never necessarily had them all together in the same room to work through those potential differences. Okay. Are there other questions? Kathy, you have your hand up, but I think it might've been from before. So I'm gonna to go to Michelle Miller. That was a mistake. Yeah, Michelle. Thanks, Lynn. Um, Lynn, in your first motion, um, like the one that's actually on the floor right now, you had put some, I'm sorry, let me see. That's where we are here, I think. Um, you had put some language in there about identifying resources inside and outside um, to address the various actions that you were proposing. And so, and that's been removed. So I was just wondering if you could speak to um, that piece if we, for example, are to approve this motion and the actions that are outlined, is it innate that those resources that would be needed would be available per the town manager, whether it's staff or budgetary? It would be my under, first of all, it's my under, we hire the town manager to run our town. And in this case, we're asking him to do various things. The reality is he knows how to do them. He knows how to get them done. And if he needs some additional motions or resources from us, he'll come to us. I don't think we need to be that prescriptive. And in fact, in reviewing the legal uh, opinion, we were you know, reminded that we don't need to be telling the man town manager how to do his job, but what, just what we would like to have done. And it, and I frankly would even change some more things in the motion regarding that. Okay. Just to follow up, just so you know, from my perspective, the, um, 
the suggestion to identify resources actually put more of the action items into and, and sort of the ways in which those action items would get done into the town manager's lap. Um, so I sort of saw it in the opposite way than the way that you just described it. But and I can understand why you'd see it the opposite way, but the reality is that when the town manager goes about doing something, he knows if he needs resources or not, and he knows how to assemble them. Sounds good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so we have those two proposed motions. Then we have one more. I believe, Shalini, you are the author of the next one, which is a substitute motion. And would you like to speak to it? Yeah, I I think I was just building off of what Kathy and I had proposed last time in our motion, which was really uh, giving indicating to town manager that we fully support his allocation of funds if needed in hiring a consultant uh, to support the DI director and department in creating the residence oversight board and um, and then perhaps having an independent view from the consultant to look at this, take this as a case of what happened and what could be improved in terms of police procedures, especially as they pertain to minors. So that was another focus there. And then to give us an interim report that would be, um, that the town manager would provide to us the timeline for that. And then looking at what we were hearing or what I was hearing last time, it felt that it's also important to clarify the role of the CRES. So I added those three other additional points, which are there in all the other motions as well. Um, the protocol to clarify the protocol for CRES and um, to continue to have racial equity training and rights and added responsibilities training as well, because when we are stopped into different situations, I think it's important to know our rights, but also what is our responsibility? How do we respond to the police or fire or crass? Like, what is that? And then developing and sharing the communications, because I'm surprised that even now there's so many of my neighbors who don't know. And I spoke to a couple of black youth recently, and I spoke to the Amherst College students uh, at the reparations listening session, and none of them knew about the CREST program. So, so I think we need to do a better job of uh, sending out communications using, and even though CREST has been amazing, their folks have been at different um, um, community events. So this is not a criticism, but just that what can we all keep doing to, um, to create more awareness around that? So those were the reasons why I created what I created. And uh, and just to keep it focused again on what we can get accomplished in a very focused way. Okay, Dorothy, you have your hand up. Yes, um, I just want to say that I am not in favor of any motion that includes hiring a consultant, um, because I think unless one of our new agencies or existing agencies asks for that, we are undercutting them. Uh, in this past year, we have just done an incredible job of setting up staff within the town uh, government and of new committees that can provide us with much of this information. So I just say, let's give them the time to decide what and how. And if one of them, like if the new DEI director says, yes, I would like to hire a consultant for this, then I would certainly listen to that. But I would feel that hiring a consultant at this time would seem like I'm undermining or undercutting her work. So um, th that's why I, I, li I liked a lot of the things that Shalini said, except for the part about the consultant. Thank you. Can I respond to that, Lynn? Please. Uh, so the reason why the consultant, if necessary, is put is because uh, the creation of a residence oversight board is a very specialized, it's a very critical, uh, process and board that has, and there are people who are specialized in creating that. And we are a department of just two people. So, it, and so this would, if, and this is just again indicating, again, Paul knows what to do, but this is, 
I think letting him know that if indeed our DEI director does ask for that, we're signaling to both of them that yes, we support you. We want you to be successful in in your um, goal of creating a functioning, effective residence oversight board. Okay, Dorothy, do you still have your hand up? Uh, well, I wanted to respond that, that I, I agree with that sentence if the DEI director asks for it. So uh, that's a different matter. I just wanted to keep who's in charge of what a little bit clearer. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then there's a final motion, which is a substitute or additional motion and does not build off of the motion that's on the floor. Uh, Michelle, you submitted this motion. Uh, I wanna make sure people are aware of it, but in, and what your intent is with a motion. Would you like me to speak to it now? Yes, please. Okay. Um, in considering a motion for tonight's meeting, particularly in the context of the motion on the table, I felt it was necessary for the council to reaffirm its shared values, along with any action it asks the town manager to take. Just like values spoken without action are symbolic, actions which are not guided by values that have been embodied are systematic. It is also critical for us to acknowledge when something occurs in our community that does not meet our stated values, as Paul did earlier in the meeting. Affirming and reaffirming our values and acknowledging when they haven't been met reduces the likelihood that we will repeat the harm and gives us the greatest opportunity to meet our shared goals. Thanks. Okay. Um, are there any uh, other comments, particularly at this point from counselors? Okay. Then I'm going to go, I'm sorry, Andy? Yes, I'm, I'm gonna um, follow the conversation very closely. As I read all of the motions, including the last one, I was trying to think about what is it, the principles and values that I wanted to apply in reading the, each of them. Mm -hmm. And um, having given it some thought, I'm just gonna say uh, very quickly, one is that I had decided up front that I did not want to uh, support a motion that made any conclusions about July 5th. I think that there's a lot of unknowns that may remain unknown about it that we don't adopt the um, findings and conclusions of other groups that haven't been, um, that, that we need to to come to our own conclusions based upon facts. I don't think we've done that. I don't think we're in a position to do that. The second one is uh, I was trying to be very careful in reading and I don't think that um, we've overstepped the bounds in the motions that, I've, that then I was looking at, but I did have it, which was uh, following on the legal opinion that we received that we don't direct the executive branch to take any action we may request or suggest, um, but we uh, cannot direct. I don't think we've done that from what I can read. Third is that um, I was um, concerned that we not create unreasonable expectations um, in any of the motions of things that might be achieved in the process, because if they're unreasonable expectations, expectations, it can lead to disappointment and possible um, accusations of broken promises. So I was um, trying to be very careful in reading of that. And the last one is that I wanted to have a motion that I thought was realistic. And by realistic, I was referring to budget, legal, and um, ex a capable of implementation. Um, and I think that uh, Lynn in her opening comments about the amendments she made to her own motion was addressing some of that 
because recognizing uh, budget limitations and realities uh, of what could happen, that some things we just have to recognize um, are going to be um, very difficult. And being the one who spends probably at least as much time and probably more time than anybody else looking at the budget and the consequences of the budget and what our future resources are over a long period of time. Um, I'm very uh, wary of making additional commitments of either um, capital or significant new operational expenses because we have to then have a, con a discussion about whether that's realistic and how it's realistic and what it would take to make it happen. And I don't think we're prepared to do that. So those are principles that um, I created. And as we go through the discussion, I may refer back to them. Thank you, Andy. Pam? I think I need to ask um, Councillor Steinberg if he means that that none of these action items should be promoted because they might in involve uh, expenditures. I'm, I'm not clear on what you're saying about that. I think that what I was trying to say was not that they don't involve any, I just said be realistic was my lead word. And uh, if something is going to cost into six figures, uh, or seven figures, then I think it really does call for um, a uh, real careful and thoughtful discussion about what the consequence of that is. But not everything that we're talking about doing is really um, of that nature. And um, so I um, ask you to focus on the word realistic. Okay. Are there any other uh, Athena, I'm going to ask you to take the screen down for the moment. Okay. Um, Shalini. Yeah. Could I get a clarification of what Michelle was um, what meant to say in her motion? There are two things I was hoping to get clarification. The first one is the statement um, up front in the motion that says the conduct of law. Wait. We affirm the constitutional and human rights of every resident, including you, then agree the conduct of law enforcement on July 5th does not reflect the commitment we have made in the resolution affirming the town of Amherst's commitment to end structural racism. From what I have understood from listening from different people, parents, kids, and of course we still don't have um, the complete information because We've only heard from one parent anonymously through a CSSJC member. We've heard from the police chief. We've heard from one parent who wrote to us but ad admitted that he was not there to witness what had happened. And then I have heard from parents who have their version of what happened. And these are all very different points of view and so, and then the fact that we're bringing in structural racism, the group consisted of youth that were white and, and BIPOC, and there is no reason to believe that they were treated differently. So I'm not sure why we are um, talking about this incident in the context of structural racism. And then the second clarification was uh, with respect to the ask at the end, which is asking the town manager to, um, to, um, to ensure that this conduct never happens, that recommendations made by committees charged with matters related to human rights, social justice are heeded, and that our youth are always, um, Okay, the youth is, of course, we're always heated. But uh, is that saying that asking the town manager to act on the recommendations of the CSSJC? Michelle? Yeah. Thanks for those questions, Shalini. Um, to the first question, so um, the 
particular resolution that I'm citing there actually is much broader um, than just uh, anti-Black structural racism. And I've specifically stated the uh, whereas, or actually this was uh, to to be resolved, um, to condemn any effort to interfere with the unalienable rights of any human being. Um, and so that's the particular line um, that is relevant to the July 5th incident. Um, in So it's not to say that the incident and anti-Black structural racism, it's not evoking that, it's evoking that particular clause in the resolution, which has much broader effect um, if you read through it. And then to your second question, um, I guess I, could you ask the question again? I know you went through the three asks, but what was the question? Uh, are you asking the town manager to heed uh, or to act upon the recommendations of the CSSJC? Oh, okay. Yes, thank you. So heed is to consider and pay attention to. Um, so what I'm asking is that the town manager pay attention to and consider um, the recommendations that are brought forth by committees that are charged with focusing on these relevant issues of human rights, social justice, and community safety. Does that answer the question? Yeah, it does. And can okay. I just, um, again, just to share my perspective on, I understand that the end structural racism, what you're referring to is a broader context that no one's rights should be taken based on, you, you know, age or, and all of those individual things. However, again, based on the fact that we've received different pieces of information filtered through the lens of different people, and it's absolutely fair to say that what people are saying are sharing their authentic experience. However, we have not yet heard from, and I'm hoping that the youth will take up uh, Paul's uh, invitation to speak with the DI director or maybe the with Paul, whoever they feel safe, or, and if not, it's totally understandable that they wouldn't want to. I totally get that. And which is why, again, it's an unknown. And to declare that that those rights have been taken. Um, I cannot agree with that just because what I've heard is in the context of what happened, it feels like, yes, a mistake was made in the statement, um, but it was in the context of explaining to the youth that you do not have a right to refuse to show your ID. And that's called a Terry stop or a Terry investigation, which I had learned about from speaking to a judge and a lawyer, and they said that if a, uh, a bylaw has been violated, um, like a noise bylaw or un, you know not driving within a certain age, it does give the police the right under the current system to ask for the ID. And the youth were okay, you know, they were justified perhaps in asking like, you know, it's our right to not share the ID. And so it was in that context of that exchange where that statement was made and it was corrected by the following officers. So I do not feel we have enough information to make that statement. Lynn, may I please respond to that? Thank you. Um, I think we should be careful about getting into litigating the matter, um, even sort of talking about judges or lawyers that we've talked to. I think the one fact that we have here that was on camera was that the police officer attempted to take away the rights of the youth. He said, you have no rights. That is a fact that is undisputed. And so what this is saying is that we condemn that. And I stand very, very strongly behind that. And the, to me, um, it's deeply, deeply disturbing that four months out from this process, we are still debating that fact. Anika. Yeah, so I have a few just 
overall comments. Um, just in regards to the motions, there are a lot of them on the table and they are packed. And so I just want to speak also just personally as someone who grew up here, who, you know, myself, I experienced, you know, harm here. I come from a generational family um, that experienced an, an abundance of harm. You know, my my aunt can tell you about her grandfather on, on Snell Street, who was a slave and wasn't able to share stories with them because it was just too painful. You know, um, we've, some of us in town have celebrated my four times great grandfather, Christopher Thompson, who, um, you know, participated in, in military acts to end slavery in America. And he, you know, died in Amherst at 79 as a pauper, not as um, a celebrated person. Um, but I, all, and so I know we have a lot of work to do, but I also know that we have a gem and a top tier DEI director in Pamela, Dr. Pamela Young, and she is our staff as town council, and it really is our responsibility to ensure that we save space for her to do the work that she came here to do. Um, she has a broader vision than we've all talked about here, than we've heard in meetings, and I think it is our responsibility to clear a path to let that happen. Um, this incident, um, I don't know that anyone has really debated what had happened um, or what was right and what was wrong, but it has become so politicized that, you know, I do hope that we can get it off the stage and put it in the hands of professionals that are used to and deeply familiar with dealing with these issues over and over again. Um, you know, we are in a place like, look what has been done here. I just don't see the conversations we've been having as progressive what I do feel is progressive and what we should all be proud of is that we're in a town that is one of the leaders in reparation movement and having a DEI department and a Crest department. And I think that, you know, we need to allow those who have other, you know, broader vision um, to, and a different vision to have a seat at the table. Uh, so I do hope that we could be careful and mindful with any motions that in any regard dictate um, or direct too precisely um, how the DEI director should um, begin her work, what she should do, what she should bring forward. I feel like we need to let those voices come through and let's hear it and let's allow someone room to spread their wings and show us what she's got. And then if after that people are, dis are dissatisfied for whatever reason, we're welcome to do so. But, you know, in, in, a in a sense, we've really been silencing some other voices coming to the table and doing the work that we're really fortunate to have here and a leader, you know, in the region to have. So um, I hope that I we can kind of move again, move off the stage and get back to the broader conversation. There are so many of our larger movements, even reparations um, included, that have kind of been, you know, stalled around this subject. And it doesn't mean that it is not important because it really is. But I think that we need to get it into the hands that can take it where we can't, because we're not, our hands are tied in many regards, not that we don't want to, but that we cannot. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask if there's any more counselors who have questions, but before I do that, I am going to ask uh, Athena that we do use the clock so that we can keep the discussion moving. Okay, Alicia. Um, thank you, Lynn. I don't have a question, just a very brief comment. Um, and it's that, like my personal belief, and this is partially in response to the conversation we're having, but also a general comment that it would apply to any motion um, that has been presented tonight. And I think that like we're talking about a specific incident, but over but also overall, we're talking about structural racism, like eradicating racism, dismantling white supremacy. And this is huge. This is not the job for any one person. This needs to be a collaborative community process where all people, all departments, all things are working towards anti-racism, not just we put it in the hands of the DEI director and that is all. Like, yes, absolutely, I agree. Like we are so fortunate to have an amazing DEI director. I am so excited. For the work that she is going to do, that cannot be the only work that we are doing as a town, and we cannot put everything on her. That would be completely detrimental to our overall goals as like as a council and as a town. This needs to be a collaborative process. We need to be coming at it from all angles. 
I am, again, very thrilled that we have such a well-seasoned DEI director, and I'm very excited to see the work that she will do, but I think it needs to be supported by other people, other departments, other initiatives at the same time for us to see the kind of effects that we want to be able to see. Anna. Sure, so I have a question uh, for Michelle about the motion. I'm curious, one of the things that we've done in the past is we've done, um, actually you and I wrote it, wrote it together. We did a, a, a reaffirming of a prior resolution. And when I'm reading this, one of the things that it, it reads to me like a reaffirmation of several other resolutions. And I'm curious why you chose this route versus the uh, versus doing a, a reaffirmation. I don't know if that's the right word, but reaffirming of those prior resolutions. And partially one of my reasons for raising this is I'm concerned about the actionability of the ask. I think that um, when we read the the th I think it's three things, right? So taking steps legally and procedurally viable to the town to ensure that such conduct never happens again. I don't know what that means, right? And so I think that there's there's so many directions that it can go. Is it one step? Does he have to take all the steps? What are all the steps? Uh, similarly, um, recommendations made by committees charged with, matter charged with matters related to human rights, social justice, and community safety are heated. I'm I'm picky, but I know I don't want other committees to feel like theirs are not being heated because we haven't necessarily made a motion that all recommendations from committees that are tasked with making recommendations, which many of our committees are, uh, are heated. And then again, the actionability of our youth being considered in decisions made by the town. I agree that that's how it should be. And how is that actionable? What's the kind of what's the um, product of that? Like, what's, what do we see that shows us that that's happening? So I think those are my two questions are, is this actionable in your opinion and how, and why this form versus a resolution? Thanks. Thanks for that, Anna. I do, this definitely could have been in the form of a resolution and reaffirming um, some of these values um, and referencing previous statements that we've made. Um, with respect to the actionability of the three items, um, I think that I am asking the town manager to take steps to ensure that this doesn't happen again, to take steps um, to heed the recommendations or to pay attention to the recommendations of these various relevant committees. However, I agree with you um, that there may be other committees that I didn't specify that may have um, relevant or, or should be heated in the context of this larger discussion. Um, with respect to the last request, I think that that's uh, something that we've been circling around in a way for a while now with respect to our youth. And even in this four months of discussion, we have, in my mind, focused so little on the actual youth involved in the incident and the broader youth in our community. And so that's a call for us to really turn our focus and when we're making decisions, budgetary or otherwise, to be keeping the youth in the forefront of our mind. So I do think that's actionable. Um, however, I, uh, you know, I'm open to if you have suggestions about wording that would, in your mind, make it more clear or provide more clarity, um, I'm always open to that, as I hope you know. Are there any other questions before we go to public comment? Again, we are not debating the motions at this time. We are asking for clarification. And there is no motion. The only motion on the floor is the one that was left on the floor on November 1st. Okay, then I'm going to go to public comment and ask uh, people who would like to make a public comment to please raise your hand.
Are there any other people who would like to make public comment? I'd like to gauge how long we need to have for public comment before we move on to motions. So far, there are three people who have said that they would like to make public comment. Are there any other people who would like to make public comment? Okay. Then uh, let me just say that um, residents are welcome to express their views. And in this case, we will say for up to three minutes. Um, the uh, council will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during general public comment. So we'll begin with Vera Cage. Please enter the room, state your name and where you live. Hi, Vera Cage, 12 Long Auto Drive, apartment 21 Amherst. I, um, I just quickly, um, it's not particularly germane to to the topic or content of the meeting, but I just wanted to notice that the chair, um, when she spoke about um, time limits, it was between two black women who were speaking. Um, and I want to say that looking at the legal opinion um, that was just put in the, put in the meeting packet, uh, it talks, just wanted to read it. Um, let's see. So it's in the last paragraph and just having served on the Amherst School Committee, the Regional School Committee um, some years ago, um, I think that there may be a conflict of interest in using the same attorney for the, the town manager um, when it comes to issues arising around what the body of the town council is able to do or, or not do. So I just wanted to put that out there. Um, because you know the superintendent can have their attorney, and then the town council—I mean the the school committee—at um, certain points can have our own attorney as well. Um, so I just want to read um, the last paragraph of um, the letter submitted by Lauren Goldberg, KP Law. Finally, the additional motion directs the town manager to seek a legal opinion on the options for compensating the youths involved in the matter. Whether and how the town manager uses legal counsel is within his power as the executive. Further, where public funds must be spent for public purposes, the town cannot simply provide the youths with monetary compensation, in my opinion. In order to do so, the payment of such funds would need to meet a public purpose for example, be used to settle a lawsuit or the town would need special legislation to specifically authorize such a payment as a public purpose. So I would, um, I'm hoping that a counselor would um, attempt to clarify that um, last part about um, the special legislation, is that locally or is that with the state as we've heard before? So. Um, the, the other general comment that I wanna make, and I see that I'm out of time, is that correct, Chair? Please go ahead and finish okay, your comment. Just, just quickly, um, I, you know, I also wanna um, notice that I, I did hear the apology um, from the town manager. Um, and I know that comes from a place of deep reflection. And I would um, want the town manager to keep that same energy and, and commitment, but also um, even go further and be more courageous 
um, in your words and in your action, um, because there are so many lives that are listening and paying attention, such people who are children who are forming their own judgments about this world and the people that are part of their community. Um, as all of you on the town council, because your words are in the public record and it's gonna go down in history, how each of you decided or not decided about the matter that has come in front of you. And just really just remind yourself, whatever you decide and however you want to formulate your opinion, that these are nine families with a lot, a lot, a lot of, of thoughts and a lot of care and a lot of feelings and a lot of love um, for their for their children and the and and also the peers that are also watching, right? Um, you guys hold an important role in this town and your words do count and they matter. So I just want you all to be sensitive to that. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Allegra Clark, please enter the room. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can, Allegra. Um, hello, everybody. I'm Allegra Clark. I am the co-chair of the CSSJC, um, although I'm not speaking here tonight in a formal capacity in that role, because um, I know that many members of our group are tired of, of having this conversation and feeling like we're not getting anywhere. Um, so, you know, I think that there were I honestly liked motion six um, or whatever we're calling it these days, the original motion that was moved to tonight in its original version the most. Um, and I think that some of the amendments water it down and I understand maybe that's personal preference on, on the president's part. Um, but I do, I think that it's important to think about, again, making direct amends around this particular July 5th incident and living amends for the way that policing in Amherst and structural racism in all the departments are held up. Um, so I, I say that because I think that leaving out the Youth Empowerment Center when we've had four months of conversation about an incident that happened with our youth is a mistake. And, you know, I just, from my understanding and, and looking through ARPA, you know, plans and everything, it, it appears that half a million dollars has already been earmarked for the Youth Empowerment Center. So it is something that we are indeed having conversations about in this town. So I would hate to see that be stricken um, because I do think it is important. And just, you know, I, I wanted to thank Councillor Pam, uh, Dorothy Pam, for her comments regarding the consultant and really wanting to make sure that the DEI director is given the freedom and faith to do her job um, and not, not putting something in place where she might not need it and letting her shine. And I do think that that's important. And you know, in our meeting, our CSSJC meeting last week, it did sound as if that might be something that she was on board with budgetarily. Um, so. So I do think that having a consultant to, to expedite the process of creating the resident oversight board would be helpful in having the foundation for how to address any of these incidents that might come up in the future. Um, so those are my two cents. And I thank Councillor Miller again for putting forward her motion as well. Thank you. Um, Deborah Pereira, please enter the room. Hello, everyone. I'm Deborah Ferreira, District 2, also a member of CSSJC. Can you all hear me? We can. All right, great. I'm back in my uh, you know, car with my kid practicing, but here I am again. 
So I um, want to say, um, first and foremost, uh, thank uh, Paul Bachman for, for beginning the meeting by apologizing. Um, I just wish it had happened, you know, several months ago, but he, you know, uh, acknowledged that. Uh, and I think that that is a great uh, step forward, right, in terms of, of modeling, um, you know, the fact that, hey, we made a mistake, we, we acknowledge it, and we want to rectify that mistake. And hopefully that means that there'll be, you know, some steps, some actual steps taken to do that. And he's modeling that. Even though for me, as we've stated, you know, uh, and I've stated, and I'll just talk as myself as resident, uh, within CSSJC that there still needs to be more accountability. The police chief also needs to apologize um, on behalf of his department and um, his staff, uh, as well as uh, take accountability and those police officers need to be held accountable for, for what transpired on July 5th. And then, you know, clearly, you know, our, our, our demands, the CSSJC demands were very clear. So whatever motion that kind of waters that down I'm not in agreement with, 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 which is to take out the youth empowerment, which is to kind of, you know, you know, go down that path. No, there, there was already clear, um, you know, list of demands that were made. And it's basically, you know, get that done. And I, and I like Michelle Miller's um, motion too, where it was having some deadlines, really having some deadlines for putting these things in place. Um, and in terms of uh, Dorothy Pam's statement about, um, you know, the DEI director um, possibly not needing a consultant, you know, as, as Allegra said at our meeting last week, she did say that she probably would need a consultant because she's spread very thin, right? Um, you know, a lot going on, there's a lot that, that she's involved in. And so we need that oversight board put in place ASAP. And that's why, um, you know, young people haven't been able to come forward, the families haven't been able to come forward because they're afraid, they're intimidated. They're not going to show up at the police chief's office to go talk to them, no, because then they feel they're gonna get tracked and they're gonna get monitored. So we need that oversight board up ASAP, like yesterday. And so if a consultant, if we need to spend money to do that, let's spend the money to do that so that we can you know, make sure to get it done. And then in terms of the emotions, none of them uh, have it because I know you all vetoed the other one last time, which is really to kind of say that there should be active deliberation consultation with CSSJC, HRC, and the reparations group um, to really make sure that we're involved in it. I understand the DI director's on, but she's spread thin and she's new. We have been in this com com uh, community for years, you know, decades, and we know this community. And so why aren't you going to, to utilize us to make sure that you to, to, to utilize our expertise and our experience to deal with this situation? So right now, Amherst is very divided. You know, we need to see action. We need to see you all do what needs to be done. And it's tonight, not another meeting and not another meeting until, you know, one o'clock in the morning where no one's on besides us, right? <laughs> um, this needs to happen now. Uh, so hopefully, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not sitting here in vain again listening and that some actual steps are going to be taken with deadlines that we're going to see some outcome that's going to help out the young people and their families and the community. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. So with that, we're going to move back to the council. Um, there is a motion on the floor, and so now we'll, we'll begin the official process of the motions, okay? So the motion that is on the floor, Alicia, yes, you have your hand up. Yes, yeah, sorry, thank you, Lynn. I apologize just because I've been in transition for the beginning of this meeting, and so I'm just now actually settling into my office at home. Um, but I have a number of motions that I wanted to propose tonight, and so I didn't know I know we already passed the period where everyone was speaking to their motions. I just unfortunately was driving at that time. Um, and so I didn't know if I should or could propose them now or if I should wait until we go over the other motions. Um, are, they, are they amendments to the existing motion on the floor? They are not, they are separate motions. Okay, then I think we should probably um, expedite this by dealing with the motion that's on the floor. And then if there are additional motions, 
which would include the one that Michelle did forward, uh, then bring them forward at that time. Now, if there's somebody in the council who would like to proceed differently, let me know now. That's okay with me. Okay. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, in the meantime, would you please make sure you send them to um, Athena so she can put them on the screen when we get to them, okay? Yes, thank you. Great. All right, so yes, Anika? Okay, so um, excuse me, with all the motions, I'm, I guess I'm getting a little confused if we have additional motions coming and there would be one to pass. Um, it seems a little awkward that we would have to, we won't know what the uh, what the additional motions are until afterwards. Maybe this is just me. It, it, uh, that's, I, that was why I said, unless the council would like to do it yeah. differently. And if I don't know, like I don't know. To... Yeah. I don't know if other people agree, but it just seems like we would be, we wouldn't know the whole package. Okay. We'd be voting things up or down. Then in that case, Alicia, have you sent the motions to Athena? Um, no, I have not yet. I'm working on it right now. Okay, Michelle, you have your hand up. I just wanted to clarify um, what Anika said. So we we can vote more than one motion, um, but what you were saying, Anika, is that we should, in case there's overlap of motions, look at everything. Is that was that the the point there or? Like I guess I'm I'm clarifying. There's no we can vote more than one motion tonight. It's not just one motion. We that... can vote more than one motion, but we what we don't want to do is vote motions that address the same thing and Great. cause confusion with regard to what we're asking. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Mandy Joe, you have your hand up. Um, you know, before we hit public comment, each of the people that had potential motions got to summarize them, mm -hmm. but not put them on the floor. So I wonder if Alicia could summarize hers mm -hmm. um, and people could ask questions before we move back to what you were going to do. Right. And I, and I'm, I, that's exactly where I think we, I'm getting the sense that that's where the council would like to go. So Alicia, do you want to talk about the motions or do you um, yes, I can. Um, I can talk about them really quickly. Uh, it shouldn't be take too long unless people have questions because they're short-ish motions, but I have five of them. Um, and so I think I just took a separate approach in terms of looking at the motions that have been proposed that include a bunch of different things. And I wanted to propose all of the things separately so that it's not one chunk of motions, but five separate steps, if that makes sense. Um, I think, and, yeah. Okay. So the first motion or the first step that I would want to propose would be the town council issue a statement regarding the situation, um, reaffirming our commitment and our, our um, yeah, our commitment to ending structural racism. Um, sorry, I don't have the exact language in front of me right now, but our commitment that we proposed as a town council. So that was my first motion is that the town council issue a statement regarding the situation. Um, the second motion would be to recommend the scope of responsibility, membership guideline, guidelines, complaint procedures, referral to the district attorney policy, the ban on retaliation, the contracts, details, fundings, meetings, confidentiality trainings, early agenda items, and um, also, okay, recommend those things in regards to the resident oversight board that came directly from the CSWG to the DEI director so that she can have all of those things that have already been completed um, to look at when she is working on the resident oversight board because all of those things have already been done. And also to um, instruct the finance committee to begin looking at options for funding for the stipends of the resident oversight board members. Um, so that would be the second motion. The third motion is to recommend that the town manager work with the APD to review and update selected policies and contract provisions of the APD. The review should include, but not be limited to the use of force policy, consent searches, low level and pretextual stops, 
the APD contract, which expired on June 30th, 2022. And so I, I don't have the new contract, um, but that as well, the APD discipline policy, the personnel information release policy. Um, so that would be the third motion. The fourth me mo motion is to recommend to the DEI director the extended process of community racial healing and visioning with Dr. Barbara Love as documented on page 41, part B of the CSWG final report. There has already been an entire outline submitted by Dr. Barbara Love who agreed to assist the community in this process. Um, and so I recommend that we recommend that the DEI director have these documents and take them into consideration in her planning for the visioning process. The fifth motion would be to recommend that the town manager assist the APD in developing a proactive anti-racist culture in the Amherst Police Department. And you're in the process of Yes, I will send these all to Athena. Writing these all down. Okay. Yes. They're all written. I just have to separate them and I will send them. Okay. Are there questions at this point of Alicia? Michelle? I'm wondering if we can take a couple minute recess once uh, we, or I would like to take a recess yes. um, once yes. those are sent to us. Absolutely. Are there any other questions? Kathy? It's a, not so much a question, but a comment. I actually read the reports really carefully that we received. And I never thought when we were asking for reports that we would do exactly what was suggested. And with Resident Oversight Board, as an example, Alicia, I've been pulling down um, examples from around the country. And there's a rich body of information that is evolving. And one of the coalition statement was, if you've seen one, you've seen one, because towns, cities design it to fit their needs. So I think we need to proceed the way we proceeded with CRESS, with, with an idea and a concept, and really develop it. Um, so just in a reaction to we've already been given in exactly how to do it. I don't agree with that. So I just want to, I'm not sure how long we want to be here tonight, Lynn, mm -hmm. but some of this um, what goes way beyond what I think we were starting with. And we also received some of the other reports and we actually received them and we read them, we heard them. And I think we need to keep our discussion fairly narrow. I, 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 I just, that's my comment, but I, I urge it and I can send some links. It really is a rich, evolving, uh, alms woods people, ways of taking complaints, the ways small towns do it versus big cities do it. It's complicated. Um, so it's a big job. That's a comment on the package that we received. Thank you. Dorothy? My, oh, sorry. May I respond, Lynn? Uh, sure. Alicia, go ahead. Thank you, Kathy. Um, so I was, uh, as most of you know, a former member of the CSWG who for months studied many resident oversight boards across the country. Um, and so we have looked at many different models um, and we have met with LEAP who also helped us come up with some of the recommendations. Um, so this is why I put the wording to be that we recommend that they use these as a guideline, not that they follow them exactly to the T and that they do everything in it, but there is already framework for all of these things. So to ask someone to start from scratch doesn't make sense when the CSWG has paid for a consultant. So again, talking about paying for consultants again, has done the research and has put together recommendations. I am not proposing that we take up every single recommendation as is, just that we use them specifically as the guidelines to move forward. So for example, we have already proposed a scope of re responsibility for the Resident Oversight Board. There is an entire written charge with membership guidelines, with complaint procedures, with referrals to the district attorney. All of these things have been vetted by the town attorney already with the CSWG with the help of the consultants. My recommendation is that these things be my motion is that these things be recommended as a part of moving forward, like as a starting point. 
Thank you, Dorothy. Um, whether I agree with every detail of her five emotions, I find that I can handle something where we deal them one at a time. The pre, you know, put the, when we, these composite motions that we have before us, it's so hard to tell one from the other. Uh, I, I find that it's just to me not a way to do business. So I'm. I recommend doing things one item at a time. Thank you. Okay. Alicia, you still have your hand up. Is there something else you wanted to say? No, I'm sorry. I will take it down. I'm just working on getting these over to Athena. Okay. Um, so are there is there sufficient information at this point to understand while we wait and receive Alicia's um, motions. I, I also want to note that it's eight o'clock. We normally try to take a break about this time. So why don't we take a 10 minute break and um, maybe we will have received the motions at that point. Okay. So we're taking a 10 minute break. Please turn off your mic, uh, turn off your video and put your video back on when you return.
It's 810, gang. Let's go. Please return to your computers and your seats and turn on your video to let us know that you are back. Athena, or actually Alicia, have you been able to send anything to Athena? Yes, I sent them all over just like one minute ago. Okay, then um, Athena, if you can, we'll put the motion that's on the floor up on the table. Somebody turned their sound off. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, so the, this is the motion that was on the floor uh, when we can, as we concluded our meeting on November 1st. The first motion after it is an amendment to that motion. And I have spoken to that. And so in order to move forward, I would like to move to substitute this motion that's on the floor with the next motion. Second. Thank, I was just gonna say, is there a second? There's a second, okay. So can we go to, so I moved to the motion that's on the floor. I've moved to substitute it with proposed amendment one, okay? And I'm gonna suggest we look at the clean version unless people feel otherwise, okay? If you would like to look at the redlined version, please let me know. Okay, so this motion is the one that continues to mirror some of the recommendations of the CSWG. It's the motion that um, also speaks to some of the demands from CSSJC, and it provides a process at the end that includes CSSJC and the Human Rights Commission. I'm, I would like to actually um, amend the motion by just not saying two months, but three months, just to be realistic. And even that's not realistic. And other than that, um, the only other thing I would probably do, please go down to the very bottom. And, and then it says, and that the town council will determine its next step by motion. The reality is it will come to us and then we'll decide whether there are necessary motions or not. So I would end the whole thing with, uh, that includes public comment period. So that's my suggestion, but, but I need Athena to um, change two months to three months. She's... Okay, and then amend... Okay, that's that's perfect. So that's the motion. Andy, do you accept those changes? Yes. Okay. Uh, so that is the motion that's on the floor. Are there comments about this motion or other things? Dorothy. I would like to add to continue to work on the Youth Empowerment Center. Particularly, I mean, if, if money has already been 
allocated towards it. It doesn't say when it gets done. We know we've had the four capital projects, but that we keep that on the plate is something that we've committed committed to. So you, uh, I'm gonna give you a suggested motion and then let's see if there's a second. And the suggested motion would be uh, somewhere around, it would be like a new four or a new five, a new five. And then the others would get renumbered and it would say, continue the work already begun on exploring options for a youth empowerment center. Do you accept that motion, Dorothy? Yes, I do. Is there a second? Second. Okay. So a motion's been made and seconded. I actually will accept that as a friendly amendment if Andy accepts it as a friendly amendment. Please read it one last time yep. and I'll answer. Uh, continue the work already begun on exploring options for a youth empowerment center. I'll accept that. Okay, so we're taking that on as a friendly motion. So that is the new number five. Right there. I'm just trying to keep it a little consistent with what it was before. You said begun rather than done. I thought that was better. Continue to explore. It's work already begun. Already begun. Yes. Yeah. Already begun, not done. Already begun. Right. Thank you. All right. Other comments? Shalini? Yeah. So in my mind, we are we're, we are drafting these motions in response to the July 5th incident. And again, I completely support the work of uh, creating, not even like starting and beginning. I'm like, we need that based on the inequities I've read about in our school system with respect to BIPOC youth. And so I'm totally in support of that. But if we are talking about how to respond uh, most um, effectively to what happened in July 5th, then I feel that that needs to be a separate motion that that and I'm happy to propose that motion separately, though, I don't feel that's, you know, even if there was a youth center, this happened at 1230 at night, and it didn't really, the youth center does not speak to this incident in in my mind and relating it to this incident is just like, oh, let's also do this and we should also do that. I mean, let's talk about those separately and focus on this is about that encounter that happened. There were processes in place, protocols that perhaps need to be changed, that need to be investigated. How can we do a better job of responding more equitably and all of those? So that's where my focus is. Can, so let me, let me try this another way. Essentially, this motion is a response to the letter that the CSSJC sent us back at the end of July. And in it, they mentioned the Youth Empowerment Center. In addition to that, the Youth Empowerment Center is already has ARPA mon money allocated to exploring the options. And so it's paralleling something that's already in process. I might add that the Resident Oversight Board is already in process because it's been charged to the um, DEI director. And there is already, you know, know your rights training that's being discussed and so forth. So it think of this as a response to the letter. That's why I would include it. I would also include it um, if that's what we need to include to have a, some, a good consensus around this. Alicia. Um, thank you. I just would like to offer my my friendly disagreement to that statement in that I think the Youth Empowerment Center is a central part of our response to this incident because this is an incident where youth were or felt disempowered and that it is the responsible of our the responsibility of our community to continuously up to continuously build our youth 
Um, and I think like it is great that we will be holding Know Your Rights trainings, but imagine there was a youth empowerment center where we could hold them on a regular basis and not just the teens who are teens right now can benefit from them. Imagine there was a space where they had outlets um, because we all know that they have experienced trauma and that they are moving through those things and that this is a, I think this is a greater response. That would be a greater response to this specific incident. And it also responds to other things. So I think it is a, it is essential that we include the Youth Empowerment Center in this initiative. Okay. Pam? Uh, in looking at uh, the, I, I would support the addition of that uh, continued work on youth empowerment to be added to proposed amendment number one, which, which raises the question that perhaps uh, when we get to it, proposed amendment number two might be dropped because it now it now has all of its elements included in proposed amendment number one. So we would have one less to discuss and work through. Thank you. So did you have a motion? Okay. Michelle? With the inclusion of the Youth Empowerment Center, what do we still have that's different between this motion and or th this amended motion and the other amendments? What are the outliers that we still have? Um, the ones I'd have to pull up the letter. I'm sorry. No, I didn't say anything. I was just waiting for an no, answer. The, the oh. CSSJC and the Human Resources Commission are included in this motion. They are not in the other, right? And then, but I think, Michelle, were you asking what's in this one that was not in one of the others? Well, just if we're looking at all of the amended motions, mm -hmm. now we have one that we're starting to work with. I think we're building support for. Um, we've added in the youth empowerment, which I very much support. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm wondering, like, what else is not in this motion that is somewhere else or what is, you know, this been reduced from something else that is in this. Mandy Jo, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this motion now pretty much reflects everything in yours. Yes, with slightly different wording. So yeah. um, as I indicated to Lynn during the break, um, I have no desire to have competing motions that are nearly identical considered at the council. So if this one whether it passes or fails, because it's basically the same, I would not intend to ever make my motion. Okay. Uh, and then Shalini, I'm looking at yours and trying to see if there's anything yours that this motion doesn't accomplish that's in yours. And frankly, I think they're pretty much cover the same ground. Shalini, do you agree? Uh, I just need a moment to look again, but I think I do prefer the amendment to language around the community vision, visioning plan with a focus on public safety and social justice. So that's one one different. It's like you. It's there in the amendment one as well, but. I prefer the language of the second one. And let me just look into my own and see if there's anything else. And so that would be. Um, it, it deletes the phrase, a racial healing and reconciliation plan. Okay. So it would be for opposed to the town council. Sorry, it doesn't delete the word a, a community visioning plan. It would add the word plan after that. A community mm -hmm. visioning plan with a focus um, on public I safety. Have, I am fine with that as a friendly amendment, Andy. It would remove racial healing and reconciliation plan. No, no, or, plan stays no, in. Uh, oh yeah, you could right. say you could leave plan. It would forward. remove what's now in uh, highlighted.
accept that. Okay, then we go to that. Anika. Oh, thank you. Uh, does this leave room for, excuse me if it's in my face, does this leave room for uh, a DI director to work with a consultant? It I'm does. So okay. uh, it says proposed to the town council a plan for the creation of a resident oversight board with possible assistance from and hire as appropriate a consultant to help with the development of that plan. Okay. And I, I also do like how it leaves what um, actions around racial healing that it is not coming from uh, counselors that with the uh, best in intention do not have um, that experience as um, a DEI director, either, you know, with um, uh, titled lived experience or as a person of color or otherwise. I think that it is, it's great that we are allowing um, Pamela and the consultant and the DEI staff and whomever else they're consulting with to establish those um, those things. Thank you. Thank you. Pat? Um, I have a, a small question about three months. It was two months before. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes on to say that two weeks before that period is up, the report has to go to other committees. So we're really only giving him two and a half months. That's right. So but the other was only two months. I know, so, we so it's only great you did one and three, a half but I think we need... Yeah. I, I want to I, I just it, point out one thing. It says... Okay. It, it just says, doesn't feel realistic. Okay. I mean, it's, a lot of these things are in process. Mm -hmm. A lot of them can be directly reported on in the town manager report as mm -hmm. things happen. Mm -hmm. And it just seems to me to do everything that's being asked to give the other committees real and ample time mm -hmm. to review what the, and to comment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and for us to get those comments and everything and review it, I think it needs to be a longer period than three months because that's really only two and a half months. Okay. Would you like to propose a change? Four, five, six. I don't know. You know, I, I, Paul, where I, my question would be, what do you honestly think? I would say as much time as possible, but um, not too late before the budget gets submitted because there's still there'll probably be budget implications that'll have to be included into the budget. So no later, I mean, no later than April one because our budget is del delivered to you on May first. So maybe. Four months. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Andy, you accept four months? Yes. Okay. We're doing great, gang. Let's keep going. Alicia? Um, I'm just wondering, does this motion propose any new initiatives or is it just referencing initiatives that are already in progress? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that clearly, Alicia. Would you okay. please repeat it? Is this motion um, referencing or initiating any new initiatives or is it referencing only things that we already have in progress? It's referencing things that either are in progress or things that were recommended by CSWG. And I think all of these appear in the CSWG report. And then in every instance, they were reiterated at some level in some way uh, by the CSSJC's letter to us. But the only thing that might be slightly new is develop a communication plan to raise awareness in the community about these efforts. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other question, Alicia? Okay, Not Michelle. right now. Okay, Michelle. Yeah, I really like in Shalini's um, substitute motion number one in that it specifically references to review information concerning the July 5th incident to recommend potential procedural changes. Um, and 
so I think that correlates to number th three, is it in yours? This is similar action. Is that right? If number three says, organize a review of public safety protocols for responding to and handling public safety calls involving all residents, including minors, in order to recommend changes to those protocols, if appropriate. So if I could just ask Shalini, um, in, with yours, Shalini, in number one, was that a similar action that you were hoping to take? And did you have anything, you know, uh, with respect to having concerning the July 5th incident, what was your intention with that? Yeah, my intention was that, you know, we're hearing from different people, different things. And so, and if we had a consultant, and generally when I go in as a consultant, I look at existing cases and what are the challenges that communities are facing. So this could be an opportunity for the consultant to look at this as a case of what are the kind of challenges we encounter and what could have been done differently based on this specific incident. So. Can, may I speak and, to why I wouldn't narrow it? Yeah. Okay. We've had one other incident since then that people have questioned, although everything was done according to protocol as they presently exist. There's been some recent incident not under the town's purview. I don't think you learn from just one incident. I think you learn from many. And none of us are going to forget the July 5th one for a long time. So I really don't want to just confine it to uh, referring to July 5th. And I just respond, Lynn, I appreciate that. And I agree that those other incidents are equally important. Um, but I just feel like right now this motion doesn't reference July 5th at all that I can see. And frankly, I purposely like it that way. And the reason I do is because I think July 5th highlighted some of the issues but it is not the only issue that brings some of these issues to light. And um, I think that we have probably, I, that's all I need to say. I, I just think there's much more to be learned by looking more broadly than just July 5th. Okay. Kathy? I... I like the wording of this uh, a lot um, for a couple of reasons. Um, I listened to Pamela Nolan Young talk to the Human Rights Commission actually after the meeting that I missed. And she was saying they're already using these incidents when they come up, one incident as well as others as case studies. And they're informing when you think about protocols. So broadening it, I always felt we should be as broad as possible because we don't want to have six, 12 and 30 hour meetings each time something happens. So we really want to sort of identify how we can work towards change. And the other thing, um, I, I think I'm right that our DEI director as well as staff, they have all the reports that, and, the, and results of the hard work that Alicia's, the predecessor mm -hmm. committee did. So nothing is starting from scratch in terms right. of ground zero uh, those reports, the citations, and am I, am I correct, Paul? They're all working. I mean, it's, you know, I liken it when I worked for the federal government under one president, we opened the file cabinets from 10 years ago, <laughs> not because they had all the ideas, but some of the ideas were still relevant or mm -hmm. they were the base. So I think this is written uh, more broadly. And my only question was the question I think Anika asked earlier, uh, I'm assuming that staff will prioritize among these, because if you're trying to do all of those at once, none of them will get done very well. Right. Um, uh, if you, um, I love it that we got the Crest program up and running, hired people, and they're on the ground. Um, it was an enormous amount of work for a lot of people. Um, and so I wouldn't want to shortchange some of the things we think are the big ideas. So I'm just would trust if we do a motion like this, that we have a smart staff um, and it'll be a bit like when CRC and the council somehow got all those zoning amendments to the planning staff at once and they did what they could, but they came back with pieces, you know, because they couldn't all be done 
on the same timetable. So I think that's that's the sense I have. I'm glad Pat Pat asked for the four months. That I'm I I trust that we will have this done in a thoughtful way so nothing is shortchanged. I also just want to point out it says we'll report on actions to be taken and or progress in addressing the above. It's not a final, you know, if if our town manager comes back with all of these solved in four months, then I think we need to go into executive session and figure out what his real bonus would look like. So especially for those people, myself included, who have said the job is already impossible. So are there any other comments on this motion? Motion's been made. It's been seconded. Shalini. Okay, this is a really small one, but I personally think it's important as, um, and it's about, um, you know, the know your rights trainings, offer racial equity training and know your rights. And I also added and responsibilities, because I think while we have rights as residents, we also have responsibilities of how we show up and, you know, what what would facilitate the police like it's it's a two-way encounter there's always two um there's an interaction that happens in these rights and responsibilities at both ends so whether it's youth whether it's adults when i'm stopped by the police and i'm asked for my id what is my responsibility and what are my rights so i think i want to know both Okay, so you would like to take in number six, you would like to after the comma say know your rights and responsibilities training. Mm -hmm. Andy. I agree with the suggestion. I think that uh, okay. my experience in legal education programs that I've done is that rights are paired with responsibilities. Okay. Um, Michelle. So I'm sorry, I guess I'm confused about this. I thought Know Your Rights was a training and that was the title of the training. Are we talking about developing our own? Know there's, your all, rights? there's various Know Your Rights training. There's not just one. I think what Shalini is trying to say is that it's a two-way street. It's understanding that Yes, they have the right to ask for identification and you as an individual should produce it without that. I mean, I don't know what all is on in, in there, but there is no one know your rights training. I understand that, but how are we, unless we're developing the training, I'm just, I am not clear on this at all. So I know there's a know your rights training that that's what it's called um i do not know about a know your rights and responsibilities training um so how can we put that in here unless we're planning on developing one that's called know your rights and responsibilities training um i'm, I'm just gonna, very confused i'm going to go to some other people and then i'll come back and respond okay anna well, you might not want to go to me because I have the same concern. Uh, so similar concern, you know, I mean, looking through things like the ACLU, looking through other organizations, Know Your Rights is such a um, such a clearly outlined uh, area and topic. So I think I have just the same question about time. If we are asking, um, when we say to hold, sorry, I'm lost on the page here. If we say to hold a Know Your Rights workshop or a know your rights and responsibilities workshop. I guess my, I have the same question of, you know, time, are we asking folks to generate something that exists or not? Um, and because the know your rights training I I'm more familiar with, and so I've seen it and I know that that content is packaged and accessible and available. So, um, I think that that's, yeah, my question is about, is this something that we are now asking folks to generate new or does it exist? Um, can I just suggest that I think that's what management does they look at what's there and then they say gee let's do this maybe we can add you know a half an hour that also talks about responsibilities it it's without it's not like starting all over completely yes thank you as a professional facilitator i do know that <laughs> i'm sorry 
as a professional trainer, I, I do know that. I was yeah, just curious right. about the timing that we're asking of our staff. Yeah. Okay. Mandy Cho. So um, I'm torn on this motion or any motion because in one sense, I feel it's important for us to do something. In another sense, I read a lot of this and I feel like it's micromanaging our professional manager. Um, so I don't know what I'm gonna do, but in response to what is being said about rights and responsibilities, the whole sentence is develop and offer racial equity training, know your rights and responsibilities training and other options for additional training to employees and members of the public. Um, if we get any more specific, I think we really are delving into micromanaging. Mm -hmm. And I don't want, I'm already concerned enough that we are that I don't want to get any more specific. Um, what I read that sent that clause of know your rights and responsibilities is to make sure that any training we offer talks about not just, you know, and, and I see it as sort of two sides of the same coin a right to, you know, when, when trainings and when lawyers and other facilitators and other activists and, and everyone talk about what your rights are if you're stopped by, say, the police or something, part of that also includes what your responsibilities are. It's normally not one-sided. And so I just see this as recognizing that without being too prescriptive of anything. So I'm not concerned about that language per se. And I don't, you know, develop actually concerns me more instead of just offering because it implies that we might be tasking our manager with doing something specific instead of just pulling that standard training place. But I, I trust that our manager, um, as Kathy said, I have to just trust our manager knows how to um, do his job and do his job well and prioritize well. Um, and through all of these conversations has gotten an idea of what we're looking for and will execute that um, appropriately. Uh, Alicia. Um, and sorry, I have the same um, concern. Mine is more specifically around the word develop also, because to me, that implies that we'll be making our own training. And so I was just wondering if that was what this was suggesting that we come up with a specific training, or if we are just going to be like hiring people to offer trainings that already exist. I think that becomes a little bit unclear um, because I also know of a lot of know your rights trainings. I've never seen a know your rights and responsibilities training. I don't know if those exist or if we're asking for that to be made and developed. Um, and while I, I think I understand what Shalini's asking, I think like what Mandy Joe said, they kind of go hand in hand. I don't know if anyone has ever been to a Know Your Rights training, but I did go to the ACLU Know Your Rights training. And those things are explained to you in the training. Like if you are pulled over, you have the right to show your ID. You do not have the right to refuse to show your ID. Like those things are told to you at the training. Um, and so like it, it's not framed as like your responsibility is to do this, but that like what rights you specifically have in those situations. And I, I just, I don't know, the wording of that whole sentence is confusing to me also. So I, I don't have any specific suggestions, just clarity as to what we mean in terms of develop and if it is actually necessary to add the responsibilities or if that just makes it more confusing. We could change the word to identify instead of develop. Does that help? I have another suggestion. Yep, yeah, please. You know, my hands up. Andy, go ahead. Yeah, and I was so uh, wondering about um, provide training about racial equity and rights and responsibilities. I accept that. Did I capture that correctly, Andy? Provide training about racial equity and rights and responsibilities. 
and other options for train for additional training for employees and members that's the sentence doesn't read well anymore now um provide training regarding racial equity comma rights and responsibilities and other options for additional training for employees and members of the public additional training to employees okay and members of the public all right i i'm fine with all of that andy providing provide training regarding racial equity rights and responsibilities and other options for additional training to employees and members of the public does that work for you the, the word additional and other options for training yeah we can take the word additional out there okay uh alicia does that help you with regard to the training Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, Andy, did you have anything else you wanted to add before I go back to Michelle? No, I lower my hand. Okay. Michelle? Yeah, I I personally still am not comfortable with this. It doesn't indicate when you say provide training, are we developing the training? Are we going out and seeking the training? Um, there is training, know your rights. Uh, programs that have been very thoughtfully developed and that empower and provide uh, a just and equitable response to the matters that we're discussing. So um, if we're saying that we're going to provide training regarding racial equity rights and responsibilities, again, are we which training? I'm not going like, to, oh, excuse me, hang on. I'm not going to blanketly uh, support a, a sort of general, you know, provide training without any specifics about whether we're developing it or. And the other piece I just have to say is that adding responsibilities um, just it feels very subtly like we're once again coming back to, well, if these youth had done something different then they wouldn't have had their rights put at risk. And I just really stand strongly against that. And maybe that's not Shalini's point, but that's what it feels like to me. Okay. I'm gonna only speak to the first part. I'm not gonna to speak to the other. And that is provide training leaves the door open. Is there existing training? Do we need to develop it? It leaves the door open for our town manager and his staff to decide. Um, in a, and getting any more prescriptive than that, I think is not our job. Um, Pat, you haven't spoken in a while. Oh, well, no, wait a minute. Nika, you haven't spoken since we've come back to this one. Go ahead. Okay. I just wanted to say also to, yes, to Alicia's point that, you know, well, first, these Know Your Rights trainings are not a new thing. Uh, they might be new here, but they absolutely like you really can't tell someone their rights without telling them the consequence. So they will actually go hand in hand because you have to let people know what could happen to them or what what the police department or whichever entity you're talking about could have the right to do what that consequence could be if you do not follow X, Y, Z. So they absolutely do go hand in hand um, without necessarily condemning anyone, but just, you know, letting people know this is your right. If you this could happen to you, if this happens to you, this you didn't, this is, you know, this was a violation, whichever way it goes. Uh, so they, you know, it really should go hand in hand. But my question is also just, I have a quick question around the we, when we're saying if we're developing because isn't the we going to uh, the town manager and the, and the DEI department and other staff consultants, if need be, and if there's any other we required, then they would alert alert us if there is more support needed um, or X, Y, Z. And, and would there also be any room here for either addition or emissions from, from the department? So we're not saying, 
you know, this is the program you have to use. This is, you know, the exact training you have to use because, you know, there are so many out there. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Pat, and then Alicia, I'm going to come back to you. Pat? Thank you. And this, um, this is kind of short uh, and echoes um, what Anika was just saying. I have been arrested countless times. And generally speaking, before I'm arrested for nonviolent civil disobedience, um, <laughs> I, I like the drama of saying it how I said it. But uh, what's important is in preparation for any action, we have always, in, in all the groups I've worked with going back to the 70s, we have trainings about what our rights and responsibilities are. Because I, as an activist, and at, even as a youth uh, in that situation, if you know what the responsibilities are, you are then able to make a decision about whether you're going to follow that or not. So I don't, I don't particularly care whether you call it rights and responsibilities, because it, the responsibilities are always included in the training. So I think we're wasting a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Okay. On this particular thing. Right. Uh, Alicia. Um, thank you. So I, I do agree with um, Pat that, that we are spending a lot of time on this one very small part. And so I apologize that I'm going to continue to talk about it, but um, it's sort of just, it's bothering me, honestly. And I know I said I was okay with it, but I'm looking at it more and thinking about it more. And the word responsibilities also doesn't sit right with me because I'm not sure that any single person has any responsibilities per se when it comes to being stopped by the police. Um, it's the police's responsibility to know certain things. People should know their rights. I think it's, and I don't think that wording is necessary. And I think it implies something that it's not that like we have the responsibility to do X, Y, and Z, which I think is personal opinion and um, perspective there again. Um, and so I think just the know your rights trainings would be sufficient um, because they are a specific training that already exists that we know we can find and provide um, if the town manager needed to. So again, I just I just have an issue with the wording as it is being proposed there. I, Shalini, go ahead, because it's your word that you wanted to put in, but I was going to make a suggestion, but go ahead. Yeah, I think as part of any compassionate training, it always comes down to what are our rights and what are our responsibilities. So as we are training, whether we are talking in the context of youth right now, it's really important that we empower them with you know, what their rights are, but they are also contributing to a situation. And they have to be aware of the causes and conditions, but also the consequences of how they're showing up. And as they're gonna go out and be leaders in the world, I think that's just a general training and compassion that everyone has, that all of us in this room right now are contributing to, so by what we see and what we don't see is contributing, is gonna have an impact. So just making our youth aware of what are your rights and what are your responsibilities, I think is a very critical part of education. And it should, it's, it's lopsided if you don't include the responsibilities and just show them the rights. So I absolutely insist on it being there. Okay, Alicia, do you have your hand up? Yeah, thank you. I still just think it's, like I understand what Shalini's trying to say, and I don't disagree that it's a two-sided coin. I just disagree with the wording and the framing of it here. And just for like one specific example, coming back to what um, Pat shared with her experiences with being arrested, like was it her responsibility to not do so and to follow, comply, so that she wasn't arrested, or was she had a different purpose, purpose and a different intention, and knowing her rights and knowing what could happen in that situation was probably a lot more helpful and useful. I don't think responsibilities is the right framing. I don't think any individual has a specific responsibility in any in any of these situations with the police. Like we should just know what the rights are, what the consequences are, what happens if you do this, what happens if you don't do this to any one individual person 
that is their personal choice. I, Andy, I'm okay if we just go back to know your rights and not add the end responsibilities because it seems to conjure up in some people's experience not a positive way of thinking about this. Your thoughts, Andy? For the sake of uh, moving this along, I probably would accept that. So you know, what I started out with was having done training, uh, you know, it, it, it they do go together. And uh, when you, you're, you're trying to make people, uh, help people to understand uh, what what their rights are and what the limitations of their rights are, and uh, so that 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 they go together. And so there's the, the, been the statement that know your rights training in the when you put that into a quotation mark because it's referring to a very specific training. It apparently does that. I think that I what I was trying to actually do in my suggestion was to move away from adopting any package as a mm -hmm. as a statement because i want to to the greatest extent possible provide the manager with the and the dei director who's probably going to be working with the manager on this wide discretion on the training uh, that's going to be provided and trust them uh, to know what how to proceed and uh by if know your rights training is a very specific thing which i hadn't really focused on very much it actually almost sounds like you're mandating a specific package and i guess i'm uncomfortable doing that right um okay for the moment well let's leave it the way it is um i'm alicia you have your hand up Uh, sorry, I think my hand was just still up from before, but I could just add the the other framing of my reasoning for not wanting to add the responsibilities here is because also in regards to the specific incident on July 5th with the youth and the police officers, if you do a Google search for laws in Massachusetts, it's actually not required that you show an ID unless you are driving. Um, and so again, I think the framing of like, what is your responsibility in this situation is misleading. Okay, Mandy Jo. May I suggest that it sounds like Alicia would like to make a motion to amend to remove the words and responsibilities. And then if that's the case, we could actually vote on whether those stay in or out. And right. then we might be able to move this conversation forward to somewhere else. So Alicia, shall we make that motion to amend this phrase by removing the words and responsibilities? Yes. Okay, second is there a second? Oh, a second, okay. The motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion about the motion to amend that's now on the floor? I'm looking for comments only on that. Mandy Joe, you have your hand up. Jennifer. Um, I may want to respond based on what someone says, but I'll take my hand down for now. I'm sorry. Okay. Kathy. Um, just just a quick observation. When Andy flipped the wording, rights and responsibilities could could refer to the employee as well, that the re employees got a responsibility. So it, we we're all talking about it as one side of the confrontation. And I know I'm not supposed to do this, but I Googled know your rights and half of the ACLU pamphlet split up said your rights, your responsibilities in them in their training session, they were linked. The title was one thing, but it always had both. And one was immigrants um, in Southern California, one was Minnesota. So I don't have a strong preference about this, but they are linked. And it, the wording could be that the employee has rights, but also responsibilities. It's, it's an artful changing. I mean, it's about training. Um, so 
I'm, it's an observation. Thank you. Shalini. Yeah, I appreciate what Kathy just said. And uh, my understanding is that the Terry investigation or a Terry stop allows um, a police officer to ask for identification. So if you're going into the technicalities of this particular situation, then it does allow the police officer to, and in which case, in this particular case, there was a noise bylaw violation, and then there was under, there were minors driving. So there were a couple of reasons why the police had the right to ask for identification. So again, so these are all the intricacies, and maybe I'm wrong, and maybe Alicia's, but that's the whole point is that I think part of that, and what I'm also hearing is that the Know Your Rights already includes any kind of training like that is going to include responsibilities. So why not say it? And also, I think for me personally, it's an important aspect because again, like I said, in creating a compassionate city or town, we all have a responsibility. It's not just about rights. And which is why having that statement and from the employee and um, residents point of view, I think it just provides a more balanced um, offering. Thank you. The, the motion has been the amendment. Yes, Jennifer, go ahead. I was going to call you. Thank you. I'm sorry. No. Okay. I think if the know your rights is a kind of training that includes responsibility. So I don't think we need to say responsibility because I mean, we all know there are incidents in this country um, where people are just stopped and asked to show ID and it is not their responsibility to have to do that. Um, and I, I'm not a legal expert, but I think that the Terry law may actually be a part of stop and frisk, which is a whole, I don't think we want to go there. So I could not support the rights and response. I just don't think we need to go there. It's a know your rights. Okay. training in in small caps i mean in small not in caps okay the motion's been made and seconded it's an amendment to the major motion would you please just put it back up on the screen for the moment No, um, yes, to remove the word and responsibilities. All right, we're going to move to roll call on this. Pat DeAngelis? Aye. Um, Anna Devlin Gothier? Aye. Lynn Griesmer is an aye. Mandy Jo Haneke? No. Anika Lopes? Aye. aye. Michelle Miller. Aye. Dorothy Pam. Yes. Pam Rooney. Yes. Kathy Shane. Andy yes. Steinberg. No. Jennifer Taub. Yes. Alicia Walker. No. Mm -hmm. No. Alicia, this was your motion. You wanted it removed. Oh, we're not, we're, we're voting on the whole motion, just the amendment. We're just vote, voting oh, on that amendment. Okay. Yes. Okay, Shalini Baumel. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I think I had it till I got confused. Okay, so this is no. Okay, so we will be removing the words <laughs> and responsibility. Now we're back to the main motion, okay? The, I'm sorry, the vote was 10-3. The vote was 10 in favor of removing it, three opposed. Okay. Thank you. Can we put the motion back up on the screen? And can I ask, are there any other questions, comments before we move to a, to a vote? Seeing none. Okay. Kathy? I, ju I just want to be on record that I voted for this because I need this to move on. But I am seeing every time it's rights, it is responsibility. So I want people to be thinking that those two actually are linked. Okay. 
No, uh, responsibilities, yes, is removed. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any other comments or questions? Seeing none, we're going to move to a vote and it's a vote on the entire substitute motion. Does anybody need to see it up on the screen again? All right, um, I'm gonna start with Anna Devlin Goth here. Yes. Lynn Griesmer is an aye. Mandy Johanneke. Aye. Anika Lopes. Aye. Michelle Miller. Aye. Dorothy Pam. <laughs> yes. Pam Rooney. Yes. Kathy Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Aye. Jennifer Taub. Aye. Alicia Walker. No. Shalini Balmilm. Yes. The vote is 12 in favor. Pat didn't vote. I'm sorry, Pat DeAngelis. Aye. The vote is 12 in favor, one opposed, none, no abstentions and no absence. So it passes. Can I go on to assume that motion proposed amendment two and proposed amendment three have now substitute motion three have now been absorbed into this motion. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. Then in that case, the next motion that we will consider and if Michelle, it's yours. Yeah. Um, so I want to consider this motion tonight. I uh, would like to withdraw the motion and I would like to work with Alicia. Um, we uh, will check in about that more thoroughly, but uh, work with Alicia and any other counselor that may be interested in. Um, so this would take care of Alicia's first motion, I believe, but she can confirm that. So on a statement that would then go through the usual process of being referred to GOL um, and then come back to the council for consideration. Okay. Motion's been withdrawn. There, and my understanding is that the town the clerk of the town council has a document with Alicia's other motions. Would you please put that up? Okay. So Alicia, these are your motions. Let's go to the very top though. Um, so Alicia, you spoke about the motions briefly. Is there anything else you would like to speak to with regarding to the first motion, which is the town council should issue a statement regarding the situation that occurred on July 5th between two ABD members and nine Amherst youth, reaffirming our commitment to ending structural race, racism and dismantling white, white supremacy. Michelle has suggested that um, her motion and your, which she, which she has withdrawn, and yours might end up in something that would be more of a resolution or a reaffirmation of a resolution, um, and that you would bring that back to the council. But Alicia, I need to know how you would like to proceed with the first one. Um, yeah, that's fine with me. Um, so I did like the the first piece of Michelle's motion that was withdrawn that had uh, recommended language for uh, a statement. I Most of these motions are very basic and might need some building upon. So I would be happy to work with Michelle and or any other counselor who would be interested in building a said statement. Um, this motion is just that I firmly believe that as a council, we should issue a statement. Okay, so that motion at this point is withdrawn. Uh, we're going to move to the next one. And this was recommending that the DEI director consider the scope of responsibility, membership guidelines, complaint, complaint procedures, referral to district attorney policy, ban on retaliation contracts, details, fundings, 
meetings, confidentiality trainings, early agenda items proposed by the CSWG Part B of the report can be found here. Recommend the Finance Committee begin looking at options for funding the stipends of um, ROB members as proposed by the CSWG. Um, so, Do you want me to speak to this, Lynn? Sure. I Yes, please go ahead. Okay. So I also, again, this is very short because if you click on the hyperlink, there's just detailed information on all of these things. And again, I am just, the motion is to move that we recommend the DEI consider all of these things um, that have already been put forward by the CSWG in terms of the work on the resident oversight board, um, the list of things that are included, in the recommendation are here. So that is what the one through um, a, a 12 were. And then 13 was supposed to be a separate thing that like in addition to recommending the DEI director consider these things that we also recommend the finance committee begin looking at options for funding the stipends of the resident oversight board members. Um, I put that in there just because I know that our funding and budgets are, are tight. And so that I think that we should be thinking about these things proactively um, as a future expense and how we would be able to fund those things moving forward. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I, if there's more explanation that needs to be had or if there are any questions. So, the, well, I need to get a second to the motion. Oh, okay. Second. Who was that? Michelle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so Michelle, uh, Alicia, you spoke into the mo you spoke to the motion. Uh, are there now co councilor comments? Mandy Joe. So I can't support the motion tonight. Um, the way I interpret this motion is that. Well, there's a couple of reasons, um, but the main reason is I interpret this motion as basically the council saying all 11, 12, or 13 of these items as proposed by CSWG, as written by CSWG, we support in that particular language. And well, first of all, it's been months since I've read every single one of these, but um, I you know, and so on that ground alone, I I wouldn't, I, I'd have to vote no if we're forced to vote tonight because I won't vote on something I haven't read in months. Um, but I vaguely remember from my reading of that, that um, I didn't actually support all of the language in all of this. It's not that I don't necessarily support um, and that I don't support the formation of a resident oversight board, but the way it was proposed, I didn't necessarily support in those exact membership guidelines, particularly, I remember that one. Um, and so I, I can't vote to recommend something that I take as saying, this is the council's, so this is what the council wants you to do. Um, in specifics when I don't actually support those particular specifics. Um, and then as to number 13, the referral to the finance committee, um, we have so many things that need funding. I, I think if we're going to look at any type of funding of any one-offs, we need to put it together with other looks of funding that we need to look comprehensively at our um, requests for funding, not throw one after another to look individually at funding options, because I think we're running into problems with funding that we want to fund so much. And then on a individual level, it sounds great. But then when the next one comes in that we might support more, well, there's no funding for that. And so, you know, I, I think if there's a lot of things counselors want to fund that we should potentially just put that list together and send it all to the finance committee for them to consider comprehensively any additional funding initiatives, not to consider them one at a time. Andy? Well, I did look at it and, um, you know, it does say consider 
Uh, so I guess the word consider allows for interpretation in lots of different ways, but I'm uncomfortable also with the motion because uh, I think that there's a point at which we need to uh, trust the, the town manager working with the DEI director that the two of them will consider anything that is relevant and important as they uh, follow through with the motion that was just passed. And um, this almost seems like getting into the micromanaging of how they're to go about doing what we've already asked them to do. And I um, have full confidence that um, they will look at the recommendations of all of the committees. And I even think we already suggested that. So um, I think that it's unnecessary. Dorothy. I think that until we raise the salaries of the town councilors, we are keeping so many good people from being on this board. Anyone watching this meeting knows the kind of hours and meetings that are required. And it's a great cost for personal life. And those who have jobs and families find it very challenging. So there's a whole lot of good people that I would like to see on this town council who at the present aren't even gonna consider it because this is a really almost a full-time job. The, the stipend must be increased. So I would wanna deal with that before I started paying people on one committee and not paying on another because then at some point that begins to be an unfair mishmash. So I, that's my thoughts. Thank you. Dorothy. I'm sorry, Michelle. Um, I would like to support this, but suggest Alicia, I'm wondering if 13 on here, um, if it makes sense, and maybe it's not tonight that this motion would come forward so we could give it further consideration, but that we attempt to to look at all of, as Dorothy was speaking, um, the stipends that are available um, for the council and for particular committees. I know this conversation has come up in the CSWG, in the CSSJC, in the AHRA, um, and maybe even in other committees. And so I'm wondering if you would be willing to remove that for now and then work on a motion that we could bring forward that would be more holistic and look at a broader um, a broader scope of that. And then the other thing I wanted to say is I think the word consider, if I'm understanding this correctly, really does give a lot of leeway. It's, it's in my mind, um, putting these things into the awareness of the DEI director so that they're not lost. Um, and, and so I'm completely comfortable with that. Alicia. Um, I, I would be okay with Pam and Kathy speaking first because I just wanted to respond to some of the concerns that were brought up, if that's okay. Please proceed. Oh, okay, Pam, Rooney. Thanks, I really appreciate um, Alicia putting these together. I think we spent quite a bit of time, seems to me sort of keeping the, the town council action tonight at um, sort of the 40,000 foot level and tried hard not to get into the details. So I, I appreciate that that there is so much work that is going on behind the scenes in preparation for, you know, item number two or item number three that we just voted on. Um, it, it feels like there may be another way to con convey these um, this background information and these next steps uh, in a way that perhaps isn't necessarily a, a motion tonight. But I really appreciate the work that went into this and the fact that we don't want to lose this information. Kathy? I'm trying to understand where Pam was going with that, but I... I don't think we need this, Alicia, because we just asked uh, to move forward on it. And I know the DEI director has the report. So she has this outline. And this is the outline of what would typically be in this approach. So 
um, I wouldn't do this um, at the beginning. We, we're, when this comes back to us, we're gonna have lots of questions and ask how come, what about the way this city does it? What about the way that town does it? What about, do we need to staff it, let alone the board? Um, so that you get an independent advisor. So I, I can't support this level of detail and emotion at this point. I do want whatever we get back to have this level of detail in it so that we can discuss these elements. Anika. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I definitely as well appreciate the effort that has gone into this. Um, and my question is, um, where I can, certainly cannot recite the um, the CSWG reports, I definitely have to um, be refreshed with some of them. Though I especially lately have been reacquainting myself. I'm wondering if this is, or if there has been a conversation um, with Pamela ahead of time, Alicia, and if some of this could. Um, like, is this already on, on the radar and would obviously be considered? Because I do have a bit of a concern as well um, with a bit of micromanaging and also just to prevent what we've seen is just like the hurt and frustration as when a lot ha has been brought forward um, from both the CSWG and the CSSJC and they're not um, implemented as exact there's a lot of hurt and, and frustration around that. So I'm, I guess just in, in a nutshell, to stop rambling, has there, or is this something that maybe um, could have, could, there could be a conversation first with the DI department? Um, and yeah, that's it, thank you. Um, Alicia, or Pam, you still have your hand up. Okay, Alicia, did you wanna go ahead at this point? Yeah, um, so <clears throat> just a couple of things to respond to some of the um, concerns that some of the other councilor members had. Um, so again, I, I thought I was being very careful in choosing the wording in terms of consider, because we are not saying that we want you to do all of these things exactly. We are just saying that, look at all of this work that has already been done, please use this and consider it in your planning for the following. Um, I brought this forward more specifically because at our last meeting, there was a lot of discussion in terms of the other motions in regards to what the resident oversight board would look like and how much work needs to go into creating a number of things that has already had a substantial amount of research behind it. And so to provide that stepping stone to the DEI director in a formal recommendation, I think would be making a huge statement, especially when it especially in regards to responding to a situation like this, where we think having a resident oversight board would have been essential and would have changed the outcome of the situation. Um, again, I think it's more of, because this is not recommending anything specifically, it's more of making a statement as a council in terms of our support of the work that has already been done for our town and our support in moving it forward. Um, and again, not to say that anything would be specifically exactly how the CSWG has laid it out, but that like a scope of responsibility has already been looked at. Membership guidelines has already been considered. Complaint procedures, like this is a significant amount of work. Um, and when we're saying like, has there already been a conversation, like a conversation with who about what? Um, because unless we're like, unless you want me to go by myself and have a conversation with the DEI director, I was hoping that as a council, we could say formally, these are the things like passing down the things um, and I get that there, there is upset when things are not done exactly as proposed, but I think there's more upset when people do tons and tons of work and it just gets pushed to the side. And we're like, hey, look, we hired somebody new. Let's let them do what they need to do because they're great. As if we didn't already have a whole committee look into these things for over a year that were also underpaid just as the council was. Um, and also uh, another thing, I, I do understand the the stipends for other committees is also something that we need to look at, raising the stipend of the council. Trust me, I work so, so, so much on council stuff that is not paid for, and I have kids, and I'm a single mom, and I have a job, so I understand that. The intention here is that recommending the finance committee begin to look into these things. Because again, if we are down the road going to fund this committee or any other committee, the finance committee should begin looking at it now because we know that we are behind and it will take time to develop things, to look into things. So again, 
I don't see this as being micromanaging. I see it as offering support, saying we have stepping stones, and to recommend the finance committee begin looking at things to anticipate things into the future, to set ourselves up, set ourselves up for success. I know we haven't all agreed upon giving resident oversight board uh, members stipends. So maybe I understand why people don't want that to happen, but I think that we need to begin looking at some of these things and what better way to begin looking at them than in response to a situation that deserves urgent responding. And again, looking into things is not making any specific decisions, just looking into them. Um, so I did not see this as micromanaging. I did not see this as telling the DI, DEI director how to do her job. I saw this more of like, one, supporting the work of committees that have already been done, and two, supporting the moving forward of initiatives in our town and supporting the DEI director in this substantial amount of work that she is embarking on and giving her things to draw from and pull from that have already been worked on. Anika, you have your hand up still. Okay, so it, it was up, but just, sorry, I had left it up, but just um, in, in response. So my, my question was more, Alicia, in regards to um, has there, not has there, has there been reason to uh, think at this point that this work wouldn't be considered not and you know I I do understand as a consultant the you know the the frustration that can come from putting in a, a ton of work and feeling that it's not being considered or pushed to someone else to just you know start from scratch and that's not my suggestion it was my question was more around has there been a reason to think that this work would not be uh, considered um, and still allowing um, the DEI department to kind of roll forward what, you know, um, organically as well, and looking at what has, uh, you know, already been presented in the work that has been done. Um, and I also, I um, I share another's frustration in terms of stipends um, that, you know, unfortunately we knew we were getting into and we signed up. And I do believe, I do support committees receiving um, stipends, but I think we also have to look that we have similar, we have committees doing very similar work that do not receive um, a stipend as well. So I, I do believe that if we're going to provide them that we should at least as well consider uh, committees that are already, you know, in, in action and working. Thank you. Michelle? Alicia, would you be willing to accept an amendment um, to just clarify the language a bit further to say, we shall recommend the DEI director consider the report produced by the Community Safety Working Group with respect to the Resident Oversight Board comma specifically, and then with the numbered items, would you be able, would you be willing to um, accept that further clarification? Yes. So um, could that be added to the motion as a friendly amendment, Lynn? Sure. Could you please repeat that? Sure. Um, so after the word consider, it would say the report produced by the Community Safety Working Group with respect to the Resident Oversight Board, comma, specifically. Yeah, that's it. I, I just have to uh, use my privilege as a counselor. Um, I don't know if people recognize the milestone that we passed tonight with the previous motion. And so I'm gonna go back a little bit in history, okay? CSWG spent a lot of time doing two excellent reports. The town council basically accepted the reports, but we never made any motions to make anything happen except for Cress 
and DEI. Okay, those are really the only two follow up things that we did at the time. Tonight, we made motions that really go into several of the other significant recommendations from CSWG. We've hired staff, they're working. And when we start getting, and they have access to these reports, they have access to the matrix, they have access to all kinds of things. So when we get into motions that begin to direct or ask people to consider, I think we have exceeded our responsibility as a council. I think we've gone beyond what we should be doing. We have hired good staff. I've hired many staff over the years. And when you hire good staff, the best you can do is to say, this is what we'd like done. This is how we work and then get out of their way so they can do their job. And when we start putting in motions like these, we're not getting out of the way and we're not letting them do their job. And so I, I'm just gonna be straightforward. I can't support these motions because they are micromanaging our town manager and his staff. And they are making assumptions that they have not looked at the already really good work that the CSWG has done, and they're, they're not considering this. They're meeting with a committee that's charged to follow up on the CSWG's recommendations. Of course, they're reading these things. We don't need to put these things in motions at this time. What we need is to see where we are in four months. And then if we need to do follow-up motions, do so. But I really, really strongly urge counselors not to get into telling people how to do their jobs. It's an insult. Anika? I'm sorry, I didn't realize my hand was still up. Alicia? Um, I just do not understand how this can be seen as micromanaging because it's not telling anyone what to do. It is making a simple recommendation, which we do all the time as a council on all different kinds of issues. It is recommend, it is not saying that we don't think she has looked at it, but it is also saying that as a council, we have not formally recommended that you consider these things. It is a statement, like I said before. It is not telling her how to do her job. She is still free to look at it and say, hmm, I don't think this is gonna work for Amherst. But at least she knows that the council thinks that this is a good stepping stone because why would we wait for her to be months into the work to recommend that she look at something that could have been a stepping stone for her to work on? Or maybe she looks at this and says, wow, there's one thing in here that I really like and I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna run with it. She could look at all of this and say, I don't wanna do anything. This motion is not, telling her she needs to do anything. It's just basically a formal saying that we have these things. They have been turned into the council. There has been work. We have put money behind these things as a town because we have paid for consultants to look into these things. This is what they have given us. Simply that is all. Mandy Joe. Uh, I respectfully disagree. I mean, I, I, I agree with what Lynn said, I think it's micromanaging to say we recommend this specific thing in some sense implies we don't recommend other specific things that we don't recommend X towns or Y towns or Z's towns. This is the one we recommend you do. Um, I'm, I can't do that. And I think, you know, I can't do that on this particular one, but I don't think it's our role to do that on any specific one. I would disagree with saying, we recommend you look at this particular one too. You know, I, I could probably add, give me three days and I can add 30 different towns to this to look at. Um, but that's not what our job is. Our job is to hire the right people, which we've done and let them do their job. Um, and this motion, I, I, I think just gets in the way of that and basically says we don't trust our DEI director to do the work. I've heard um, Anika ask multiple times, do we have any indications she hasn't 
consulted or read or looked at or is, isn't is using the CSWG report. And we haven't heard any response that says, no, she hasn't. I mean, we haven't heard any response that, yes, she has, other than we know she's got them. And so without without that, I, I just can't support it. I think it, it's a step too far that the council shouldn't take. Michelle. Sorry, uh, Lynn, you had said that aside from um, creating CRESS and the DEI department, um, we hadn't taken any actions um, that the CSWG had recommended. Um, but we have, we created the CSSJC um, mm -hmm. and their charge um, was specifically to follow up on the recommendations made by the CSWG. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, what this does is enshrine and inform, make formal um, that particular recommendation, similar to what we've done with the motion. And I'm just, the, the earlier motion that is, I'm, I guess I'm having a real trouble when we're using the argument that we've stepped too far or that we're directing and that we're not respecting our staff by, uh, you know, taking away their uh, leeway to proceed as they wish, um, we could say the same thing about the motion that we just voted earlier. So I'm just, I'm, I'm not, that argument is not really resonating for me. Um, and like I said, the CSWG um, made recommendations. We formed the CSSJC. And I will say um, and use this opportunity to say that I have heard over these past four months a lot be brought into question with respect to the CSSJC's charge. And I really encourage us all to look at that charge and, and take it to heart and take it to to and if if there's a problem with it then it should be brought to the attention of the council to discuss because um in my view the CSSJC has been charged with very specific things and they have tried to move forward with those things on multiple occasions in various different ways and uh, every there's always a, a block being put up or a barrier or a, a comment that 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 you know that that's not within their purview. But just go ahead and look again at the charge because it's very specific. And I recommend we have a conversation about it if there's going to be um, a questioning of their role. Alicia. Um, thank you. Sorry. So in regards to, I think it was Anika and, and Mandy Joe's question as to whether or not there has been a conversation with the DEI director in regards to the um, receiving this information, um, I have not had a conversation with her. I don't know if someone has or if there has been a conversation. Uh, that is not particularly my concern because I don't see this as a, a trust issue. Um, I see this as providing the DEI director with tools for her toolbox and she can do as she pleases with the tools that are in her toolbox, but giving her more tools is not harmful and it's not insulting. I, I don't see this as an insult to her at all because I'm not telling her how to do her job. I just think we have information that has already been given to us. Why can't we formally pass it along to her? It's not, I, again, I'm asking her to consider the, these reports, this specific information as it is directly related to the resident oversight board. I'm not just giving her the entire CSWG report and be like, hey, look at this. Great. Read it all. Like, this is a very specific set of things. I am saying that, like, look, we have these things to consider for the specific initiative that you are currently working on. That is where I see the difference in my interpretation of this and other interpretations that I have heard. So I just wanted to make that clear. Shalini? If I'm hearing, Alicia, your intention is to offer this as a tool to um, Pamela, then I don't see why it needs to be in the form of a resolution. I'm sure as part of her job, she has to look at, and she's working with CSSJC, as Michelle said, they're working closely, and that's 
Um, so she already has access to the report. So I'm not sure why we need to have a resolution to put it in her toolbox. I think it's just part of a job to look at current research that has been done. And the CSWG is such an important report, the two reports. So I am confident that she is looking at it and we don't need to, I'm just not sure what, it feels like you're saying we want to put it in her toolbox, but it's already in her toolbox. So I don't know why we need to have a resolution to further put it in her toolbox. Anna. I'm curious if we can hear from Paul, uh, if as to whether or not he knows if the DEI director has considered these things in her work so far, if that's okay. And then um, Alicia, question for you is how, uh, how will we know, right? So if if the motion is to consider these these various things, uh, and the DEI director elects not to follow the recommendation, not this is not, I'm not saying that would happen, but if so, how would we know, right? Are you expecting a report back saying yes, I considered these or um, something else? So I guess that's a two parter, one for Paul, one for Alicia, if that's okay. Paul. Um, thank you. Um, so clearly the DEI director has the report, both reports from uh, CSWG um, and, you know, has, re has reviewed those and is, is using them as a reference point as she develops the recommendations for the things that we put on her plate tonight, actually, and because many of them come from that report. Um, I also would just note that, so when they count, when the council speaks, people, staff take it very seriously. You know, if you're spending your time on an action, they feel like it must be important. So they, they want to pay attention to it. So when you um, pass a motion, I mean, that's and comments are one thing, passing motions are a different thing. Um, it sort of raises it in terms of the, the, the employee's heads that they should be paying more attention to something. If that is your intention, that that's okay. If, you know, but just be alert that your your position in the community and for the staff is is pretty high in terms of what um, role you play as as the elected leaders of our community. Uh, Thank you, Paul. And Anna, your second question was uh, just for Alicia. I was curious about how kind of what the what the follow up would be if if there was a vision for that or how we would know. Um, again, I I mean I think I'm struggling with this because. I'm erring on the side of it. It does feel, um, I, I hear what you're saying about not micromanaging because we're not saying the conclusion needs to be drawn, but it does feel like we're giving a directive with, with extreme specificity to a staff member. And I am, that concerns me. Um, and I think similar to what Paul said, based on the conversation, if for whatever reason she wasn't looking at that before, she definitely probably is now. But I'm, I'm just curious uh, if you thought or if you could share with me your thoughts on how uh, we would know whether that would be considered if you were expecting a report back or something else. Yeah, so I think, sorry, thank you, Lynn. Um, I don't have like a specific, like I want to report on how you used or if you used anything from the recommendations in the development of the resident oversight board, but I expect that this will be a process that we will be regularly updated on either way um, through town manager reports or when we're getting closer to the time of actually like making moves on certain things that we may have the DEI director come to a council meeting and share with us some things. And so I basically, again, just want this to be like a formal recommendation as things that she can have to work with. And I think that I think she would address those things if we made this a recommendation in her report. I don't think we would have to ask for it. She could say, I took this or I used this and I decided to go this way because I looked at this or what have you. I don't think it needs to be like a specific reporting mechanism. I think it's more, again, just as a recommendation that she consider these things. Paul, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just wonder if it would be helpful um, to the council I mean, another option is to have me write to uh, the DEI director and say, please make sure that you take this, you know, the, the, bulk, the bulk of this motion um, in, in consideration as you start to examine things. And maybe that helps the council move forward on this discussion tonight. And, and as her supervisor, it would be more than appropriate for you to bring this to her yeah, attention. I mean, it's, it's a very good question. Make sure that she's paid attention to it, actually. It's not, I'm sure she is, but... If that's an option, if you'd like to, me to do that, I'm happy to do that. 
There is a motion on the floor. The motion's been made and seconded. A friendly amendment was accepted and it is shown in the motion. Are there any other comments? Alicia? Um, I just have a question in regards to Paul's suggestion. Um, so if we decided that we wanted that to happen, that would be a vote of the council as well? Would that have to happen via a vote of the council? Oh, no. did you feel you uh, needed well, I, that? No, I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't anticipating a vote. See, a, a vote is a is a formal action. You know, I think I can tell you if you would like. You know, and based on our conversation tonight, I am happy to move this forward as an email, and I can copy the council on what I wrote. I write to her as a alert that, and I'm sure that this is being um, considered, but. Um, I'm just hoping to help. Yes, I don't think you need a vote on that. And I would actually, you know, it would be a directive. And I, I think I would reject that actually, you know, because I can't. So the answer is it doesn't yeah. need to be a vote. Yeah. Alicia. Yes. So can we have a commitment? Can we ask for a commitment from Paul? I'm not, I'm just unclear as to how this would work. Um, so like the two things I'm thinking, like, so would we just ask that Paul make that commitment that he would do that? Or do we amend this motion in terms of like recommending that the town manager um, like send this info? Like, how does that work? So the, 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 one of the problems in, in this at this point is um, let, me, let me refer to federal government. When the federal government passes laws, there's also the accompanying document that includes the discussion that went in to that passing that law. And when staff and heads of departments and secretaries that head departments implement those laws, they pay as much attention to the discussion as they do to the actual motion. And I think what we're saying at this point is Paul has heard this discussion as Pamela's supervisor. He is more than able and willing to talk with her, to send her an email that says at the recent council meeting, there was a discussion specifically about these items. He's even willing to share that with us, which frankly, I think goes beyond the requirements of a supervisor, a town manager, um, to share a document like that to someone he supervises. But if Paul is willing to do that, that's fine. That doesn't require a motion. It's, it's, basically, it's basically like saying message has been heard. We don't need a motion. That's how I interpret our relationship and our discussions in the council. Michelle? Yeah, I, I was just going to say that, you know, I think that it's understandable that with this particular matter and the response to this matter from the town manager, um, there is some concern. Um, and, you know, receiving Paul's apology this evening. Um, it really impacted me and it really um, just hit home in a lot of ways. And it was also, you know, the other side to that was, wow, like if that had happened four months ago when this occurred, so much um, of this trouble that we've been having as a council would have not occurred. And so I think that as Paul is really, um, coming forward with this leadership and saying, um, you know, I hear you and I'm going to take these steps. Um, I think it's important for us to reinforce that by, um, by really acknowledging what he has said and taking him at face value and giving him the opportunity to do that. So I'm just sort of trying to balance both sides that I do think that it's understandable that we've had, we have concerns as it pertains to this incident with regard to the response. And I, it's really, uh, 
fantastic to see Paul stepping forward and in and leading us um, at this point in this matter in this way. So um, that's just what I wanted to add to the mix right now. I think that's a very uh, thank you, Michelle. I think it's a, it's a basically saying our town manager has stepped forward. Let's trust that he has heard and he has. So Alicia. Um, yes. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Lynn. If there is a, a commitment from the town, um, from the town manager to move this forward, then I would be okay with um, taking the motion back or like removing the motion, withdrawing. but I, yeah, withdrawing the motion. Thank you. Um, if, if that is the case, okay. I, I just want to be sure that there is a commitment to do so. Okay. And I think Paul, you've already given that commitment. Okay. There are three other motions. They um, are still there. And Alicia, I guess the question to you would be, do you see these motions in the same vein that we've just gotten done discussing? They're recommendations. You've put them forward. It emphasizes your um, concern, your commitment, and clearly your respect for the CSWG's report. Um, and basically by bringing them forward, you are uh, alerting, if you will, the town manager that in working with ABD or the DEI director, that these are things that he would be paying attention with along with the staff that are appropriate. So I'm, I'm really searching, Alicia, as to what you would like to do with the other three motions. Um, so I think that was that could have been the case for the motion that I just withdrew, and that may also possibly be a choice for the fourth one. I'm not sure about the third and the fifth. So the third one is recommend to the town manager to work with APD to review and update selected policies and contract provisions of the APD, this review shall be including, that's the, that's what you're referring to as the third one, right? Um, yes. Okay, and then the fourth, the fifth one is recommend the town manager assist the APD in developing a proactive anti-racist culture. Um, no, sorry. So, sorry, you said the fifth? That's the fifth. Yes, the fifth, sorry. Okay. Andy, you have so your hand. Go ahead, Alicia. No, I was just clarifying that I think that the fourth one could probably be dealt with in a similar manner as the one we just I just withdrew. Okay. So that's part of saying look at the report and particularly consider these parts of that report. Okay. And that the town managers already made that commitment. So you're, are you therefore withdrawing the one to say recommend the DEI director reference the next steps? Um, well, I would also like just like to hear the commitment from Paul because I, I don't want the communication to just be, hey, make sure you look at the CSWG report. I want it to be like there has been specific conversation regarding the recommendations in regards to the resident oversight board and also like specific conversation in regards to the engaging our town in the extended process of community racial healing and envisioning. Um, and I put the page number because there is a an outline that Dr. Barbara Love provided us with as to what this process could look like. And so I want that specific, like those two specific sections to be highlighted. It's not just, I want her to read the CSWG report. Paul, is there any reason you don't, you have a problem with this? I I guess I'm getting confused by the action that council already took, which mentions some of these things and what this, if there's a, it seems like there, there's a difference, but I'm not catching what the difference is because uh, in the motion that council already voted, it does talk about some of these things. So uh, some clarification, I think if it's, if it's just saying, make sure you look at what was said in CSWG, that's one thing, but if there's some nuance that I'm not seeing, because I think the council's vote, if I, if I have the, my notes, right. Um, Paul, Alicia, 
um, is it that you do you want to make sure that the town manager in talking with Pamela focuses on that page and portion of the CSWG final report? Um, yes, I think I, well, I, I mean, just exactly what it says that the DEI director reference the next steps like that she look at them the same thing as before it could be changed to consider. Um, because again, there's, we, we have outlined an entire process an extended process that would have taken a few months of community racial healing and visioning. Um, that was, um, proposed by Dr. Barbara Love, but we also had input from the community when we did surveys in terms of what community members would like to see happen. So I'm asking that that work specifically be referenced when taking the next steps to move forward in that process. Because this, this one is just slightly different than the resident oversight board, which was just research and the committee making recommendations. This portion came directly from community feedback. So I want to I want to make sure I'm clear, Alicia. Are you saying that this is the way the DEI director is supposed to go by following that exactly? And you're trying. Oh no, I'm just saying that she referenced that when deciding the next steps. So in many in many ways, you're using the word consider again. Yes, yes, that's why I said okay. this. I see as a very similar. Okay thing to the one that we just talked about with the resident oversight board. Um, again, the only difference for me here is that this, although the proposal that I'm referencing came from Dr. Barbara Love, the need for community racial healing and visioning came from the community. Okay. But it's really to ask the DEI director to consider the CSWG report as we take the next steps in engaging our town in an extended process of community racial healing and visioning. So yes. that, that's the request. And Paul, that's, he's shaking his head yes. You can't see him doing that. So he's going to have to say in the mic, yes, I got that one. Okay. Yes, understood. Okay. Well, so Alicia, the, therefore, are we removing, are we uh, um, we're not going to deal with that motion. Yes. So I would be happy to withdraw that motion. And just for like a final clarification for Paul, I just want to be sure that it's the document on page 41. Again, I'm not just asking that the DEI director read the entire CSWG report. I'm asking for like specific sections for the initiatives that she is currently working on to be referenced. Okay. All right. So that motion has been dealt with and is being withdrawn. Okay. So now we have the two motions that deal with the APD. And again, they go back to, um, well, the first one specifically goes back to the various um, recommendations that were made in the CSWG report. Um, and those are still, um, I mean, we did, speak in the previous motion that was accepted, protocols, et cetera. Is there any other, what else would you like to say about this motion, Alicia? Um, yes, thank you. So I do see this as very similar to one of the, um, one of the number points in the motion that just passed, um, which talked about looking at policies and procedures. I would just say that this is referencing specific policies that we already have um, recommendations as to what type of work can be done to address um, those or change or review those specific policies that we have at the APD. Um, there's a report from LEAP that goes over recommendations as to what changes in the language, what language changes could be made in these specific policies at the APD. Um, some of them, the last two specifically, which came to play in the July fourth incident, as we saw when we were trying to move through the process. Um, and so again, I think this is the time where we would look at specifically addressing those specific policies. Um, and so again, I'm not reviewing, I'm not 
suggesting there is no concrete suggestion that we change it to this, but that these specific policies be reviewed and updated and that there are already recommendations available to reference and draw upon in regards to these specific policies. Is, is there, um, again, this has been put on the table. It directly dovetails into a part of the motion that was already passed. Do you feel that there needs to be an additional motion? Is this a question for me? Yes. Okay. Um, yes, only because this is very specific. So I think it builds upon the motion that was passed earlier and could be an addition to. Okay. So then you're going to put the motion on the table, but I'm going to ask, I see a couple of hands and I want to ask for people to speak. Shalini? Do I need a second before we talk about it? Yeah, or Just once they had their hands up even before we got to this. So let me do that. Shalini, and then we'll come back. Yeah, I actually wanted a clarification from uh, Alicia about the last one that we've just asked Paul to convey, communicate with um, Pamela. And, and just so that everyone's expectations are the same. So Alicia, were you hoping that uh, Pamela is going to look at because it was a specific process that's outlined on page 41 and there's a specific consultant that's mentioned there. So are you seeing look at this for ideas of what is needed by the community or are you saying that this is the exact process and the exact consultant? Um, no, I just would want her to use it as a reference point. Um, and so I think that there could be many outcomes to that situation could be using ideas, using it to develop her own ideas, could be reaching out to that consultant to talk more, could be lots of different things. I think that would be up to the DEI director, just that I want her to know that that specific thing Thank has you. already been provided so that as a reference. Thank you. Okay. Oh, Thank you. Um, Pat, you have your hand up. Is in regard to this or what? Go Sorry. ahead. One more follow-up thing. Sorry. Uh, can we also get from like in terms of the timing and everything and I don't know what's happening at the back end I know they're doing a lot of things in the DI department and so there's also the time frame aspect like do we you know is there Alicia an expectation when this needs to happen because I'm wondering if you have to give them the opportunity to prioritize the different things or can they all happen at the same time I'm not sure I think we have to leave that up to the staff. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was going to say a similar thing if I might just add. I, I don't think that I had any thought of how long this would take, just hoping that it will move along very quickly because we did already have a consultant willing to do it and take it on and start immediately. So that's why I thought seeing what that person was going to do and what their outline was might help the DEI director in deciding what or how she wants to approach this. Okay. All right. Are we, we're ready to move on to this. Andy? So are we on uh, discussing the two motions that remain on the... No, we are not. They're not on the floor yet. Okay. I'm going to uh, lower my hand and, uh, and raise it again if they come on the floor. Okay. Pat? Um, I get, I'm curious, I'm assuming contract, and this is for Paul, contract conversations are happening with the APD because their contract has expired. So I'm assuming you're already in that process. Is that accurate? Um, yes, the contract expired. We're in negotiations with the union. Right. And yeah, I won't ask any yeah. questions about okay. that. Another uh, issue is, um, I think that the second motion is important because we're looking, while we're talking about being an anti-racist town, uh, I think we really need to look at our police department um, because it because it's a uh, it interacts so directly with all, all kinds of people in the community, from cognitively disabled to homeless to people of color to um, lesbian and gay people, so that I think that it, um, 
So when it says anti-racist, I, I automatically include other things as well, which aren't here. I guess my, I, my other question is, are you or have you, um, or is there a process going on in the APD to look at use of force and consent, to look at these issues? Is that, you know, we have the DEI director who's going to be looking at stuff. We have Earl Miller directing Cress, looking at protocols and procedures and things like that. What is the process in the police department around issues of, of their procedures and processes? Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and have Paul answer that question, but right now there is not little an, an actual legitimate motion on the floor, okay? We're getting there, right. So Paul, go ahead. Okay, Paul. Um, okay, so um, so if, if there's good, a couple of things. When you make a, if you're going to make a motion on this, I need to understand if this is an endorsement of this because of this policy, like the recommendation from the CSWG, because the council hasn't really acted on the recommendations of CSWG other than the creation of the Crest Department and the DEI Department uh, in terms of um, having a sort of formal proposal or anything like that. So in, under the CSSJC charge, they're supposed to be implement working on things that the council has voted. That's what their charge says. So I, I just wanna make sure that the council is clear about if it takes an action, what does that mean? Um, I would have to get back to you in terms of what has happened on these, um, in terms of where they stand with the police department, um, in terms of actual reviewing policies. Um, I just, I, I don't wanna venture a, a guess on where this is. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't wanna say something else, that'd be wrong. Yeah, uh, Alicia. Um, thank you. So two things, I was hoping that we could, like I'm, I, I'm putting a motion on the floor, so I'm hoping we can see if there's a second so that we can actually have a discussion of the motion, because when I talk, tried to talk to a motion earlier, I was stopped because it wasn't seconded. So like, I would like to talk about these motions, but I would like to put the motion on the floor. Please go ahead. So I'm, I'm going to move the first motion to recommend the town manager work with the APD to review and update selected policies and contract provisions of the APD. The review shall be including, but not limited to the use of force pol policy, consent searches, low level and pretextual stops, the APD contract, the APD discipline policy and the personnel information release policy. Second, Miller. I was just going to ask for a second and the second is Miller. Um, Alicia, did you wanna to speak to the motion? Yes, please, just very quickly um, in response to Paul's um, statement, I didn't specifically reference the CSWG report in this motion. Um, however, I know it's very clear that that's where this recommendation came from. Um, I know the council has not moved on any CSWG recommendations aside from the Crest Department and the DEI, um, which is why I am putting some of these forward now, because I'm hoping that in response to this specific situation, some of these things move forward and that we might see the necessity in moving those things forward now. Um, I also think that this just adds more specificity to the motion that we passed earlier in terms of specific policies that um, were relevant in this situation specifically that may be reviewed and updated. So I don't have any suggestions as to how they be reviewed or updated here. Um, I know that, that info, there are some of those things available in the CSWG report, but I did not include any of those things in this motion here. Um, and so I would hope that we would take it as at face value as it's being proposed to review and update. Okay, Anna. Sure, so I think that there that most of this would be covered in the prior motion. Um, if, if I'm reading my notes right, which was uh, to organize a review of public safety protocols for responding to and handling public, public safety protocols for responding and handling to public safety calls involving all residents, including minors, in order to recommend changes to those protocols if appropriate. I feel like this does 
um, possibly go beyond that. I think that there's a little room for interpretation. So something like the personnel information release policy might not have been um, captured under the, the previous one. And I'm fine with adding a layer of specificity. My one question, and I don't know if this is a friendly amendment or if I can just ask this of the uh, of Alicia and Michelle to consider adding, but I think update as appropriate or if appropriate. Um, I what I am concerned about is is this reading as if these will all be reviewed and updated uh, when some of them may be reviewed and no changes are deemed necessary. So I'm curious if the sponsors would be willing to add the words update if appropriate selected policies. Alicia, that's a um, friendly amendment. Yes, I, I would be willing to add that amendment, but I just want to say that these specific policies were picked out by consultants whose job it is to review um, PD policies. Um, and so some of their recommendations included things as simple as like, could use clarity in the language in this policy. It's unclear as to what you mean here. Um, and so there's a reason why these specific policies, like I'm hoping these specific policies will be updated, even if it's just clarifying what it's already saying. Um, so I, although I do, I would agree to that uh, friendly amendment. I just wanted to state that. Thank you. And the second, Michelle, do you agree to that friendly amendment? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Andy, you have your hand up. Yeah. Um, I said way back at the beginning of this discussion, and I mean really beginning of the discussion, that I had four criteria. And I think that um, I can't support this, at least on the last three bullets, because I think that they're inconsistent with the policy that I stated, which was is to be realistic in compliance with in realistic meant uh, considering budget legal and uh, capable of implementation. I think that the contract, the disciplinary policy and the personnel information release policy are all matters of collective bargaining. And the charter is clear. The collective bargaining is a responsibility of the executive. It is not a responsibility of the legislative. There's a long uh, understanding that we don't, as a council, get involved with collective bargaining because that's the responsibility of the town manager. And I think that uh, this just takes us over the top. So I cannot support this motion with those three bullets included. Um, do you want to make an amendment to remove those? <clears throat> yes, I'll make that motion. Okay, so the motion is to amend the motion that's on the floor by removing APD contract in parens, which expired on June 30, 2022, APD discipline policy and personnel information release policy. Is there a second to that amendment? Second. Okay. So we need to focus on just the amendment uh, if we can. Michelle? Yeah, I guess I'm um, confused given this is recommending that the town manager, and I think uh, the criteria that Andy outlined for himself was that you, Andy, you just said that these three reports are within the executive's purview, but this motion is making a recommendation for the executive to work with the APD. It's not making a recommendation that the legislature legislative body work with the APD. So I'm not following your rationale there, um, but happy to have that clarified if I'm missing something. Andy, do you want to speak to that? Yes, there's an implication that you're telling, um, suggesting to the town manager how he conduct negotiations. And there's an implication that you're wanting a report back on those specific things. And um, while the contract may or may not become public in the end, 
Um, I think it is totally contrary to what we understand that the charter provides and uh, I cannot support it. And I think that there's opening ourselves and, and opening the entire town up to some legal challenges that are just totally unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, could I just respond because I, I do want to make sure I understand this properly. So like the first three are policies um, of the APD, where the second three are personnel related policies. Is that how you would describe the split on those two? Yes. Okay, all right. Thank you. Dorothy? Um, I think that I just want to state the obvious. This is about a committee that did a lot of work and hired a consultant, which we paid for. Okay, the town of Amherst paid for the consultant. And the consultant, I assume, was a specialist in this field. The fact that some of these issues are contract issues or personnel issues um, does not mean that we can never, or that the town manager or that someone in town government can never look at them. They're not sacrosanct. So, um, I maybe Alicia can tell more tell me more about the consultant when government money and time and effort is spent so many reports end up in a box shoved somewhere under a bookcase and it's a total waste an absolute and total waste and it's often done on things that are difficult and hard to discuss so I would be for keeping this in because a consultant who obviously was hired because they knew something of this field suggested that these might be problematic areas and include the words recommend the town manager where feasible and or allowable. In other words, there may be reasons why he cannot check those out. Okay, fine. Um, but to say that things are totally off the table forever, I don't find that acceptable. And to ignore work that was done by a committee that hired a consultant that we paid for I think is just kind of silly and which has us going around and around in circles and we do so much waste, so much waste of time, effort uh, in this town that, um, you know, it, I, I think that at least the town manager should be asked to consider looking at these things, maybe soften it, but the consultant brought them up as being problematic areas. And I look at some of them, they sound to me, yeah, maybe they are. So in a, in a spirit of, of, you know, positive spirit, not a, not a, a kind of like, oh, I'm going to find out where the, all this, the secrets are hidden or, you know, where the bodies are buried, but in a, in a positive thing, sometimes things need to be looked at with a pair of fresh eyes. Okay. The motion's been made and seconded, and now there is an amendment on the floor to eliminate the last three bullets or dashes, okay? That's what we should speak to at this time, and then we'll go back to the main motion. Pam? I'm speaking to keeping the last three items on this list. Uh, this reminds me a little bit of the MOA um, agreement with the library committee of the library trustees, where uh, we did suggest to the town manager certain parameters and conditions. And I think, as has been said already, there are a number of items that clearly are of concern um, that simply need to be reviewed and looked at. And I don't think that that just because it's contracts, just because it's discipline policies, I think those all really should be reviewed and looked at. Um, someone at one of our public forums made a very strong statement and they said, you know, change doesn't really occur until you modify a contract. And it states in there, you know, expectations for behavior, et cetera. And so we know that that's really an important thing. I think it, I think these things deserve to stay on a list um, for the for the review period. And did you? So I support removing these three. Um, I'm sorry, you support. I support removing those removing. three. Okay. Um, I think it exceeds our authority as a legislature. I think we're confusing two different things here what we want the town manager to do and what we should formally ask the town manager to do. Um, that MOA 
we needed, they wanted funding. It's within our legislature's purview to do the funding. We have to vote the money. We can put conditions on the money. That's what we can do as a legislature. And so then delegating to the manager to negotiate the conditions on the money is a logical step for the body that votes the money to do. We don't negotiate the contracts. That's charter section 3.3 M. Um, no, contracts are, oh, M is, and I got it up here. Um, I think it's 3.3, not 3.2. 3.2, you know, it, it, the council has no authority to negotiate the contracts. It has no authority to negotiate the disciplinary policies. So we have no role at all in those items. And so to recommend the manager do that inserts our non-role into a role that the charter gives to the manager absolutely. Um, that to me is the difference. That doesn't mean if we say, no, it's not our role, that we don't want the manager to, or that we don't think the contracts need negotiated again because of X, Y, and Z. It's just saying and accepting that it's not our role to tell the chief executive officer how to do his job. Um, that's what the charter, the charter gives us policy authority. It doesn't give us the contracting negotiation authority. Just because we have the policy authority or just because we can sit here and make up a motion doesn't mean we should be legally allowed to or that it's a proper and appropriate motion. But just because we don't act also doesn't mean we don't believe that that, that failure to act or it, admission that or recognition that it's not our place to act doesn't mean we don't agree with certain things. It just recognizes it's not our place to act. So I'm gonna vote to remove those three items because I believe it's entirely beyond our authority and goes against the charter and the separation of a legislative body and an executive body. Alicia. Um, thank you. I, I just, I, I wasn't, there was no intention for the council or anyone on the council to be a part of the negotiation process at all here. It is saying that in respect to these specific areas that there re be review and updated if appropriate. So I don't think that is telling us, I don't think we're telling the town manager anything specifically to do in terms of the negotiation process. Again, sometimes the APD contract is something we can do right away. Sometimes it's not uh, available to the public right away. None of those things are changing with this motion. Um, and I, I don't see this as outside of our purview. And I see that the last three are actually extremely important, um, extremely important things to review and update if we want to address certain issues that we are trying to address. Um, and so I am in favor of leaving them here. Um, also just, I think Andy said something about things that are realistically implementable. Um, and again, these came directly as recommendations from consultants. Um, the LEAP, which does this for law enforcement agencies around the country for a job, looked through what the APD gave us in terms of their discipline, disciplinary policy, in terms of their information release policy, in terms of their APD contract, and said these could use updating. So while we're not saying what specific updates or what even to do with it, like these are very specific recommendations that came to us for professionals who do this for a living, who have done this for other municipalities, who have actually made these active changes, which means it is a realistic, possible, implementable thing. Um, so I just don't see how these would not be possible or implementable <laughs> when other municipalities have already done so. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cough into the mic. Um, Dorothy. Well, I, I love to come after Alyssa because she is such a clear speaker. Um, the language here has does not say the town council is going to run, supervise, read, or do any of those things. So that was a, I would say, a deliberate misreading of that language. 
And um, I, I did appreciate the uh, clarification that Alyssa gave. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Shalini. Yeah, I think, um, Alicia, I wanted to understand better, again, the intentions that uh, with respect to these three, and is it that there were these specific recommendations, as you said, that were made in the CSWG report um, as provided by LEAP, and is the intention here for Paul to, I mean, it feels like all of these recommendations were made and then what happened to them? So is it really just asking Paul that has something been done on them? Are you considering them? Or is that what we are asking for? Um, well, I know, I think I'm moving to recommend that he review these things uh, yeah. because they have, although they they were recommended by the consultants to the CSWG and they were put into the CSWG report also just full disclosure, this does not include every single recommendation that was made by LEAP. Um, I pulled the ones that I thought were most relevant to this specific situation. Um, but those recommendations came to the CSWG. They were included in the report, but like has been brought up many times, the council never chose to act on any of those things. So that's what happened to them. They're just sitting in the CSWG report. I just found them to be extremely relevant to this situation and thought that now would be a good time to act on it. Um, specifically concerning the APD contract, since it is currently in negotiation right now, uh, what better time to be reviewing and updating if necessary or if appropriate than when it is in review, if that makes sense. I don't know if that answers your question, Shalini. Andy? Yeah, thank you. Uh, and the CSWG is not the council. It was a committee and it was, uh, it expressed its opinions about uh, matters that pertain to collective bargaining. I think that's very different from this council that is created by the charter. It has a very specific charge, a very specific limitation. And so I don't think that they're analogous and for, uh, the town manager to choose or not choose to consider CSWG recommendations during contract negotiations is a decision that uh, the manager has to make, but this council should not be getting involved with anything that is directing how uh, contract negotiations, anything that has to do with collective bargaining should occur because that is specifically re, re, um, delegated to the town manager. And uh, I think that it does create additional problems um, because um, of the complexity of collective bargaining. And uh, so I, I really feel very strongly about this um, having, um, been involved in contract negotiations and knowing how delicate and important it is in every step of the way. Um, this one, I think, would be a real mistake, and I urge urge the council to adopt the amendment. Michelle. Um, so I pulled up the report. Um, and I'm specifically looking at the um, recommendations that came in the report by way of the uh, contractor that was hired to make these recommendations. And they're very specific, they're very detailed, and they're very relevant to what we've been talking about here for four months. Um, so I can't imagine why we would want these very relevant recommendations that, as Dorothy said, we paid for to not be very seriously considered. I'm reading this report. It is completely coming to life for me. Um, it is not uh, 
2D any longer as I read through these. And it's very, very relevant to what we're talking about. So while I understand the concerns that Andy has, and I truly honor the concerns that Andy has, I am wondering if there is some way that we can come to a place here where we recognize that these recommendations that were made to the committee and then to the council by the committee through a third party contractor who specializes in these matters, um, how we might bring them off the pages and to life. Um, and I truly believe that will move our community forward. Um, and if you have time to read them, I recommend that you do. So I'm asking the question to counselors, is there a way, we're at an impasse, can we find a way to take those recommendations that were in the report um, and make sure that they are considered um, by our town manager and in the negotiations with the APD? Michelle, I don't have a response to your question. Um, if somebody else wants to try a response, they can. Uh, I'm, but I just wanted to state that. Shalini? Yeah, I was going to propose something similar in the sense that I think the collective bargaining and that process, as Andy said, is very delicate and there's so many factors that impact that process, which we are not aware of. So I would want to leave that separate. However, I do see the, the benefit and uh, you know, all the work that has been done and documented in that report and to, to have a way to, uh, and where it is at least considered and implemented or not implemented, but for what reasons? So I was looking at our amend the motion that we passed and organized a review of public safety protocols for responding to and handling public safety calls. Could it could many of them, maybe not all of them, but could many of the recommendations be looked at when that particular aspect of protocols is being looked at? Personally, I believe yes, but that's my personal opinion. Pat? I want to call the question. Second. Okay, okay the question's been called, the motion's been seconded. Um, that brings it immediately to a vote. And um, that question being called stops the debate and comment. And we well, have to vote on the call, vote, quest, quest call the question, and then we go immediately to vote to, um, depending on that. So there's no comment when somebody calls the question. You have to go to the immediate vote. It's been seconded. So I'll start with Ana I just want to know what we're voting on. Sorry. I just need clarity as to what we're voting on right now. Thank you. Uh, we are voting to end debate on this motion. And on the amendment, we are voting to end debate on the amendment. Okay. The amendment that was removing the last three. The amendment to oh. remove the last three. So all you're doing the first, this first vote is to vote to okay. stop, yeah, vote to stop debate. If you vote yes, you agree to stop debate. If you vote no, you want to continue debating. Okay. Um, uh, Anna Devlin, no. Uh, oh. I think I start with me and I vote yes. I was so ready. Mandy Jo? Aye. Anika? Aye. Michelle? No. Dorothy? Yes. Pam Rooney? Aye. Kathy Shane? Yes. Andy Steinberg? Yes. Jennifer Taub? Yes. Alicia Walker? No. Shalini Belmilne? Yes. Pat DeAngelis? Aye. 
Bonnie Devlin Goth here. Aye. The motion passes. It is 11 in favor, two against zero, zero. Okay. So now we are going to move immediately to the amendment. The amendment is to remove the last three items. APD contract with Prens, which expired on June 30th, 2022. APD discipline policy, personal information release policy. So that is the motion. If you vote yes, you're voting to remove that. If you vote no, you wanna keep those. I'm going to start with um, Mandy Jo. Aye. Anika. Aye. Michelle. No. Dorothy. No. Pam Rooney. No. Kathy Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Aye. Jennifer Taub. No. Alicia Walker. No. Shalini Balmilne. Yes. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Anna Devlin Gothier. Aye. Lynn Griesmer is an aye. Uh, that is eight in favor of removing and five opposed, correct? I have nine to four. Hmm. Opposed were Miller, Pam, Rooney, Taub, and Walker. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, I missed one thing. Okay. All right, so we are removing the last three items if we take that off and now we're back to the motion as amended. Okay. Are there any further comments about the motion as amended? Michelle? Yes. And this is going to appear that it relates to what we just voted off, but just bear with me for a second. Um, in a recent CSSJC meeting that I attended, the uh, Pamela uh, said that she is not involved and has not been involved in contract negotiations with the APD. Um, and I'm just putting a question out there really to Paul um, and, and to others about what sort of best practices and standard practices are when there's a DEI director in place that interfaces uh, a great deal with matters that relate to community safety, social justice. Um, so wondering if what Pamela reported was in fact, uh, is still in fact the case, um, and if there's any commentary that Paul can offer with respect to that. Well, uh, what she said is true. We, before she started, we had a negotiating team established. When you negotiate with a union, you each have your negotiating team. We are typically represented by a, an attorney and by the HR director. Uh, the town manager makes the ultimate decision. Okay. So, Man uh, yeah, go ahead. Add to that briefly. Okay. So, um, Paul, at this point, could she be added to those negotiations at your discretion? I will not discuss. We're, we're in the middle of contract negotiations with the union. I want to per, you know, um, uh, clearly disavow the discussion that I'm um, present in, but I'm not participating in the discussion about collective bargaining. I don't want to have an unfair labor practice charge against me. So I will not discuss contract negotiations, the makeup of my team, or um, while we're in active negotiations. Okay, just bear with the fact that we aren't aware of all, I'm not, I will speak for myself, I'm not aware of all of those components. So I'm asking from a very genuine place and not a place of trying to, you know, uh, meddle in the middle of that, really just trying to understand. I understand that, thank you. Mandy Jo. Um, in looking at the motion as it now stands, I wonder if because the prior motion passed, the motion to amend passed, if we could get a friendly amendment to remove the phrase and contract provisions from the first part. I think it was just overlooked in the motion to amend. 
since the remaining three bullets have are not related to contract provisions at all. Um, and I'm trying to save another motion to amend. That's, that's and I appreciate that. So uh, Alicia, it's your motion. The suggestion is that we remove the phrase and contract provisions. Uh, yeah, I that? think what I think we have to now. Yeah. Okay. So we accept that. Michelle, you seconded. You yes. accept that? Okay. So we are now back to the original motion that has now been amended. Recommend the town manager to work with the APD to review and update, if appropriate, selected policies of the APD. This review shall be including, but not limited to, use of force, consent searches, and low level and pretextual stops. Kathy. So I, I just wanted to make a comment on these three areas because I like Michelle, I've got the LEAP report in front of me. Um, so people know what's in that report. One of the things they said in some places, the wording is just not clear. That if you read the policy, you would say, hmm, and it needs to be uh, clarified. In others, they're making specific change recommendations. So I think um, I, I'm more comfortable with these three areas because they were flagged as places where other communities have basically cleaned up the ambiguity and also made some changes. So I, I think all of this, Alicia, if I'm right, is coming from the, the LEAP report and the specifics that they were focusing in on. So my so it's it's a positive statement on my side with these three, but I'm just wondering whether these aren't already under review. So it is a question because these three were flagged and I know Cress and others have been sitting looking at protocols because we have the more general look at protocols. So if they haven't been flagged, I think this does a good job of saying here are three areas that were identified for, um, and in some cases it is, literally just an updating, like clarify with the meaning of the words. Um, so, uh, and Paul, so I, I see in that a question to you, do you have any knowledge whether these have been looked at in recent we, recent months? I don't think they have. Okay. The answer is- Thank you. That, thank that, you. Was, that answered my question, thanks. Okay. Are there any other questions on the motion that's now on the floor? Seeing none, I'm going to move to a vote. Um, and Anika Lopes. Aye. Michelle Miller. Aye. Dorothy Pam. Yes. Pam Rooney. Yes. Kathy Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Aye. Jennifer Taub. Yes. Alicia Walker. Yes. Shelley Balmoon. Yes. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Anna Devlin Gothier. Aye. Lynn Griesmers and I, Mindy Johanneke. Aye. That motion passes unanimously. We have now further identified some things that go with the first motion. So we have one more motion. Uh, let's, uh, the motion, Alicia, please go ahead. Um. Yes. So, I mean, I think it's, pretty self-explanatory, but the recommendation is that the we recommend the town manager to assist the APD in developing a proactive anti-racist culture in the Amherst Police Department and that it be documented and regular updates, sorry, typo, updates be provided to the council. So oh, it's word updates. Is there a second? Second, second. DeAngelis. Okay, so the motion's been made and seconded. Pat DeAngelis was the second. Are there further discussions about this motion? Anna. Yeah, thank you. So- um, oh, I'm sorry, hold on a minute. Alicia, did you wanna say anything further about the motion? I'm sorry, I just didn't ask her to speak to the motion. No, Alicia, um, no it's okay. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer though. And um, But I, I'd be happy to hear Anna and Mandy Jo. Great, thank you, Anna. So I'm hoping to offer another friendly amendment. Um, I think one of the things that's, that is tough for me about this motion is 
uh, developing a proactive anti-racist culture is, um, it's a huge charge. And so trying to, developing a culture is, is, a, is a challenging charge um, because it isn't up to one person uh, to, to do, right? It requires buy-in, it requires um, constant regular work. And, and I, I think that I, I mean, I know that everyone knows that. So I'd love to offer potentially another friendly amendment to add the words, uh, or sorry, to adjust it to say, recommend the town manager assist the APD in identifying steps to develop a proactive anti-racist culture. So I'm adding, instead of developing, I would say in identifying steps to develop. Uh, Alicia, do you it. accept that as a friendly amendment? I do. And um, Pat, do you accept that? Okay. Yes, I do. All right, let's make sure we get it in here. Thank you. I think this will, um, it clarifies the actions a little bit uh, more. Okay. Are there any other comments? Mandy Jo? I feel like I sound like a broken record tonight. <laughs> um, I am concerned that this one, again, oversteps um, a legislature's job. Um, one front is the charter only allows us to talk to the manager, yet this one essentially, you know, it, it's a fine line and I don't know whether it vi violates it or not, is essentially telling the APD to develop a proactive anti-racist culture. And that's not, I, I want to be clear, I'm not against that phrase, like, and that statement, right? Um, but um, how far do we go to tell the manager how to do their job? And I just struggle with that. The last motion at least talked about policy and we as the legislature under the charter are the policy leaders of the town. Um, this one targets one specific department only. And I'm concerned about that. I mean, it, I, I don't think we're intending to say that the rest of the town shouldn't be developing a proactive anti-racist culture, um, but we're specifically saying you have to tell the APD to do so or assist the APD to do so as if we, as if the rest of the town staff, it's not as important for. I mean, I thought when we were doing all the resolutions and when we were doing all of this and why we're doing all this work is because we want the entire town and the entire town staff to have a proactive anti-racist culture. And I guess I, I struggle with saying, you know, telling the manager, hey, it's part of your job to assist town departments in doing this, number one, it, it, I'm not sure we should have to do that. And number two, is it appropriate to call out only one department? And I'm not sure it is. So I, I don't at this point think I can support it, um, but I'm, I'm, I guess I'm interested in what people think. Okay. Andy, I'm sorry, Paul, you have your hand up. So I'm gonna go to the town manager. That's appropriate, yes, thank you. So I, I had my concern I have several concerns about this. One is that the implication is that there's one department that is racist and the others aren't, or that there's one particularly racist department. And I really object to that. Um, I think of, actually of all of our departments, the police department has done some of the most proactive um, anti-racist work that has been done in the town. They've had you know, implicit bias training for years. And so I, I, I fear the implication and the, um, what this means to our police officers when they read what you, if you vote this. Second, I do think that it is instructive because it's, it's instructed, whatever that means that you're directing. And I think that's beyond pale of what the, what the council's allowed to do. 
I mean, if you say recommend, which is a softer word, but I mean, that means what if I do nothing? Will the council say, fine, we, it wasn't an instruction anyway. Um, I feel like um, this actually is something that could be put into your goals. I think it's an important goal, a really important goal for the town. And then I would think that you would say, how are you going to implement this? This is the one of the reasons we established the DEI department. So we have someone who knows how systems work, how organizations work and how you put things together to place this in the in the um, police department. I think really um, leaves a, a very strong person on the sideline who has, we have already talked about certain departments that we want to start to work with and it's not the police department. And so, um, I would think that you would value the advice of your DEI director before identifying one department as being a priority for, for the work, because it is a big job. It's a gigantic job. It's a, it's a person by person, department by department, town by town job. So my concern is, is many fold. Uh, and, um, and I, think that we have so much focus on the police department that we have forgotten about the other part departments of the town that also need work. And quite frankly, I would say so. And, and I think it rightly belongs in your goals if that's what you want to do. Andy. Um, I, what I was going to say was uh, just a piece of what Paul said. I really feel uncomfortable with um, a motion that it sort of assumes that a particular department needs um, attention. Um, I don't think that we have a factual basis to make that conclusion and um, that we um, would be making a mistake to pass a motion that has that implication in it. Paul, did you have additional comment? Okay, Alicia. Um, yeah, so I think the intention of this motion is being completely missed. And I just wanna point out one thing that is there is a huge difference between being not racist and being anti-racist. And I think that is what's being missed here. This is not to imply that the APD is a racist department and they're the only racist department and that's why they need to be addressed. And being proactive and anti-racist is, it's intentionally putting in place things to prevent racism from occurring. It's not just saying we got into a situation there were people of color and we didn't do anything that was racist. It's very different. It's a proactive approach. It is a positive term. It is a positive framing. It is not negative. We are not saying the APD is racist. We are saying we are going to put in policies or procedures or practices or trainings or what have you that allow us to be proactively fighting against racism. That is the difference. Anti-racism is being against racism, not just not being racist. There is a huge difference. I also agree that every single town department could use this. The reason why I am recommending that this start with the APD is because again, of the incident at hand. And because again, th this is a national issue. This is not just an issue of Amherst. The AP, the, I mean, not the APD, the PD itself, police departments all over the country and everywhere have were founded on racism. So what better department to start with. I'm not saying this is the only department and it lies here and it ends here. Every single department, every single person, every single everything should be working every single day to be anti-racist, not just not racist, but intentionally acting against racism. And I think this is also a perfect way to build trust in our town. And it is positive. I, th I think looking at this in a negative way is what is framing this bad for us. Because again, what we want here is improvement and better. This is not, uh, I just, it's hard because I'm not trying to call out anyone. I want everyone to improve. I want this entire town to improve. We can't improve every single department and every single person at the same time. It doesn't work that way. 
So I'm just asking that this be one of the steps we take in towards reaching our goals and in towards addressing the situation that is hand because that is at hand because again that is the entire purpose of this entire special meeting that we are having right now is to address the issue that happened on July 5th. And so one way that we can address that issue and to ensure that things like that issues of that nature aren't happening is to create proactive anti-racist policies. I'm not saying that they don't do trainings. Trainings is not being proactively anti-racist. There is a huge difference here. And so I, I just think it's being misconstrued what I'm trying to propose. Pat. Thank you. Um, I'm not calling out the Amherst Police Department as being racist and other uh, departments not. Um, what I see is the power of police um, and what that means and how any person, any resident reacts to police, but more particularly BIPOC people or other marginalized people. To me, uh, racial bias is embodied. I, I, it is in my body and I react from that place. And it take, takes work and a lifetime of proactive work to address, to get ahead of what I've learned in my body. That's true for every person, irrespective of the color of their skin. Uh, we have different experiences all based on certain kind of biases. Um, I know that the police department, our police department, the Amherst Police Department, which I support, has been doing trainings around racism. I talked years ago to Cyrus Cox about what, and, and he was coming in uh, to work with the department. But the ongoing nature of the work is important. We look, we, we need to contrast APD with what's happening at UMass, where an employee uh, uh, is walking to work and gets stopped by the UMass police. And they, we've had two other recent incidents with the UMass police. So I think there's a real contrast. And so for me, and I don't know whether Alicia would agree with this or whether it will make a difference to others, but I would like this to say that we recommend the town manager assist the APD in con to, uh, to continue or to continue to uh, the work already done to develop as a proactive anti-racist department or if that makes any sense to you, Alicia. So it's a friendly Copy way of saying it. It's a friendly amendment that would say recommend the town manager assist the, a the APD in continuing to develop a proactive anti-racist culture. Uh, that's a friendly amendment, Alicia. So I am thinking about this not because I disagree, just because I'm not sure that any department is currently actively trying to be anti-racist. I, I think, like, I don't think that they're actively, it, I just, I feel like anti-racism itself is not being understood. Um, it, it, it just, it needs to be active work to be, to, to understand, to explain, to solve racial inequity and racial injustices. It's active work. It's not just trainings. And so like, yes, I, I would love the town manager to continue the things they're already doing. I think this is what they're already doing is great, but I think it needs to be more. Um, and I think the focus needs to be on anti-racism and it's not being racist. I think it needs to be actively anti-racist. And there's a big difference between not racist and actively anti-racist. And I, I don't know if I'm doing the best job at explaining it right now, but I think that is what's being missed in the conversation. And I also just wanted to add one quick thing that I forgot to say earlier. And like, 
even the best can be better. So I'm getting the sense that you are not accepting that friendly amendment. Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it exactly as so. If, 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 if we wanted to add something that would be like also continuing to engage in other trainings or whatever, like something around that language, I would be happy to include that, but I don't want to take out the develop a proactively anti-racist culture because I don't think we have done that yet. I suggest How about to build upon, to build upon the current trainings? So, so that, what, how would you, how would the sentence read, Michelle? Um, maybe like to Go build ahead. upon. So maybe if you added the to build upon after, um, assist the APD in building upon. I, I don't know what word would go there, but by identifying steps to develop a proactive, if that makes sense. So like to build upon current initiatives or current trainings, current practices um, by identifying specific steps to develop a proactive anti-racist approach. I don't know if I'm getting to current, it. How about current efforts? to develop a proactive anti-racist culture in the APD? Um, well, I still wanna keep the, I think the amendment that Anna added with the, oh, the identifying steps. Yeah. So you're okay with build upon current efforts to develop? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, That's a friendly because amendment. I Yes, I do accept that. If that if that is going along the lines of what Pat was looking for, I'm not sure if I completely. Yes, it is. Okay. So in building upon current efforts, identifying. I, I think steps, you can add an and between efforts and identifying. And identify, and, okay. All right. So uh, Michelle, did you have anything else you wanted to say? Yeah, I just wanted to add that I really do see this as an opportunity. Um, and I do think this is positive. And there, there's a lot, there's some great books about what anti being anti-racist is and means. And I think that it is not, it is absolutely not about determining or implying that somebody is racist or that an organization or department is racist. It's about actively fighting against racism, which is, I think, something that the APD, the town council, and many of the other departments and people in this community have um, demonstrated the will to do. So I just want to really be um you know, vocal about framing it in that way, and particularly as the e APD receives this uh, information from the town manager. Dorothy. Okay, uh, several times tonight, Paul has said that when we mentioned these things, that we could add it to our goals. But you know, I'm looking at I've got the town manager self evaluation here policy goals and one of them says racial equity and social justice so i'm wondering whether he, what he's asking us to do beyond that we have that is one of our goals now in light of the conversation we're having would we want to modify that and include the word anti-racist um or was he giving us something else i mean because he said it he said it to us several times not just tonight and i'm not quite sure what i was supposed to make of that so my this is my my question is to Paul. What does he mean when he says if the town council finds it important, they could add it as one of their goals? Because it is one of our goals. So Dorothy, are you asking whether this should become a goal instead of a motion tonight? No, no, but I I'm I'm just this is I had this wrote this question down quite a while ago, but he said this several times, and I just don't know what he means because it is a goal. Um, it was kind of like, well, what you're doing is interesting, but why don't you take care of business first and make it a goal? But it is a goal. 
we, we says racial equity and social justice is one of our goals and one of the goals that he is has been asked to, to carry out. Or maybe maybe he means something else by that. I I'm 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 not being funny here. I really am asking for clarification. Paul, do you want to speak to that briefly? Yeah, so I think the um, specificity of this request um, is different than what than what your goal is. And I think if you want to be more specific in your goal, which um, in your um, okay during the goal setting process, this is like a standalone statement um, that is just going to stick out. I think, um, and maybe that's in your intention. Um, I think the council should express itself by a majority vote of what it votes on its goals in terms of what it wants to see in policy. And, and this seems to be a lot more specific. And, um, and as I said previously, I think it, it, it edges into instruct, instructing the manager to act in certain ways um, and, and including the police chief. Andy? Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, was there anything else, Dorothy? No, no. So um, what he's saying then is we, we want to make our goal more specific, we can, and we could work towards it. But he's feeling uncomfortable with this particular motion and wishes we don't vote for it. I guess that's what I'm hearing. I believe that's what you heard. Andy? Yeah. Um, going back to the criteria that I stated way at the beginning of our meeting tonight, hours and hours ago. Number one was the one that I thought I would get the most pushback on and I haven't, uh, it hasn't come up until now, which is make no conclusions about July 5th. Uh, and I think that's exactly what is now being suggested because when the uh, question was why start with the APD or call them out, it was, because you can't do all departments and uh, uh, we know we should start here because of what happened on July 5th. Well, it then is making conclusions about what happened on July 5th. And, you know, I'm not sure that I go along with that um, after, you know, we keep forgetting that not all of the uh, young people involved were, in, were uh, BIPOC. There were a number of white youngsters in that group. Um, so how did we analyze that? Um, then there's other questions that come up about what is it that we have been allowed to see and what haven't we been allowed to see um, is to know the full context. It, it, it implies findings that I don't think that we're prepared to make and therefore picks on um, the APD as needing something more because of what happened in July. There's no basis for that. Um, and uh, so it really seems to me that the motion really ought to be pertaining to all departments and leaving it to the executive to decide how to go about and implement it and it should be something about recommending the town manager uh, to uh, determine, uh, well, just recommend the town manager, uh, assist all town departments in making sure that they're not um, anti-racist, and that isn't the perfect wording, but that kind of a concept. But I really um, am concerned about picking out APD under the circumstances, especially after that statement was made. Um, again, I'm exercising my privilege as a counselor. Um, I actually want to very much support Paul's statement in this. I think this targets uh, the APD. I also think that in our previous motion we passed, we talk about training. The whole bullet was dedicated to it. If we want to put more into future goals, which we're going to be doing during the month of December, or actually starting next week, uh, then let's do it. Um, and I, I 
I can't support this particular motion. And I frankly don't even want to amend it to mean all departments because I think we already covered that in the previous motion. Shalini? Yeah, I completely agree with us proactively taking steps to develop an anti-racist culture across all departments. And I agree that we should make specific, add the specificity in our town manager goals, but doing it over here, again, just echoing what everyone is saying or some people are saying, I absolutely feel that by singling out the APD, firstly, we're making assumptions. We don't even know what is in place, right? So we don't know what has been done, what hasn't been done by the APD vis-a-vis -vis especially other departments. So we're singling out APD to go through these additional steps, whereas we don't even know what, you know, for all we know, they, and what we did here, Paul says, they have actually done more. So, which again is not enough, but then it should be across the town and not just singling out. Um, so I do not support that at all. Alicia. Um, thank you, Lynn. So I'm just kind of confused because if we agree that this should happen across all departments, why would it be an issue? If it's going to, if, if the hope is that it eventually will happen at the, pay, the PD, the issue is just the statement. Like I'm, I'm not understanding that piece. And then I also think that what I'm saying as this being taken up in response to the July 5th incident is also being misframed because this recommendation came before the council long before the July 5th incident. So this recommendation is not in response to the July 5th incident. I am bringing it forward in response to the July 5th incident. This recommendation came before that. The CSWG charge was specifically to make recommendations on reforms to the current organizational and oversight structures of the Amherst Police Department. With an emphasis on the BIPOC community, rebuilding trust in these communities. Very specific. That is why it is so specific. There hasn't been any other um, committees that I know of that were charged to look at other departments and to do such a thing. That is why this is here. I am not bringing this forward to be spiteful to the APD. That is not what is happening here. I am trying to help my community build trust. I'm trying to help my community be better. This is not, I, I just don't understand why this is being looked at in the negative. Like this is gonna hurt somebody's feelings. Whose feelings does it hurt when we're saying like, look, look at these things that you can do to help prevent these incidents, to help build trust in the community, which we know has been broken, to restore things that we want to restore. We talked about having the press department and how essential it will be to have an alternative service for those who don't wanna call the PD, but isn't it still an issue that people don't wanna call the PD? Don't we still want to address things with the PD so that people are feeling more safe and more comfortable? We can't just outsource everything. We can't just say, well, if you don't feel comfortable with the APD, call Crest because the APD should also be available for everybody. But in order for that to be to happen, there needs to be some more rebuilding of trust, specifically with the BIPOC community. That is not making any assumptions as to what happened in the July 5th incident. And I'm also sick of hearing that just because all of the all of the teens involved weren't BIPOC, that that doesn't mean it's a BIPOC issue. That doesn't matter. There could have been one BIPOC teen there. It then becomes a BIPOC issue. I don't understand. I don't understand the framing of any of these things that are being talked about. I really don't. And then I have a question for Paul specifically, because he said there is an issue with this motion being so specific. And I want to know what specific about this is an issue, because I think this gives the town manager and the PD the freedom to create this and to decide th what we're doing is enough or to say, these are the trainings that we're taking. Like we're asking for it to just be documented and regularly updated to the town council. I don't see what is so specific about this and why it is such an issue. I really do not. Paul. Thank you. And thank you for that opportunity, Alicia, because I've been thinking about what you've been saying and uh, differentiating between uh, an anti-racist culture versus uh, whatever it is we have uh, 
more uh, the work that we're doing now. So, and, and since the question is what what would what be a different, like I think a goal for the council, a challenge goal I think would be to say to the town manager, we want to start building an anti-racist culture within our departments and within our town uh, through our our workforce. We ask you to work with your DEI director to come with a plan for how you would go about doing that mm -hmm. and pick the department or the group of people or what, however you think about doing it. And there's different ways to do it. Our DEI director has, we've talked somewhat about this in terms of, do you create a group of the willing? Do you, and then expand that out? Do you choose a department? Do you tar target particular um, um, activities that we do? But there are different strategies for that. And, and I don't know what the right one is for our organization, but I think that like, if I were a counselor, I would say that would be a challenge goal to the town manager. And it would be a pretty big one to say, we wanna start creating an anti-racist culture. That's our goal for next year. That's what, not next, I don't wanna put it off like it, but that's our goal, because that's the next step where we're going. And so um, in terms of this being very specific, it feels, uh, honestly, it feels targeted, and even though, People are saying it's look at it as a, as a positive. Um, I can guarantee you most people who are going to be affected by this, who we haven't talked to about this, are not going to feel that way. But I do I do value the goal. And I think that you you are pushing to the next level, which is exactly what we need to be doing as a community. Um, but so that's, that's my comment on that. I'm going to just really quick for clarity. When you say affected, do you mean negatively affected? Like you expect that there will be people who will be negatively affected by this motion in the PD for clarity? When I try to do a policy of anything, I try to meet with the people who is going to, to we're gonna be asking them to do things. So I try to connect with the people. I, I'm not always successful at that, but that's usually the goal is to talk to the people who are, you're gonna be asking to do additional things or do things or rethink things and things like that. So, um, so in whichever group that we talk to, that's what I mean by that. It's 1117. I'm going to allow this continue unless somebody makes a motion to call the question to 1125. And then we're going to take a break. So keep that in mind, Michelle. I really like what Paul just said about the goal and I'm taking notes for GOL. I think that's a really uh, excellent goal um, for the entire community and the entire town. So I appreciate that. Um, I also just, I want to say that I don't understand. It seems to me in these conversations, like we're assuming so much fragility on the part of the APD. And it feels like we're Many of the comments that I hear feels like a coddling or a protection of the APD. And to me, that raises a question about what is going on, what sorts of conversations are happening um, that we're not hearing about. Um, for the chief of police um, to be in a position where he feels for whatever reasons, he was unable to apologize for the circumstances that occurred on July 5th. That tells me that we have, there's something broken there. We ask our children to apologize when they've hurt somebody or where even there's been a perception of hurt. And so something about this feeling that there's constant coddling, that there's fragility, that the police chief can't apologize because perhaps his officers will have take issue with that. That's really, really deep. And um, it's concerning to me. And so um, I think we should give the APD more credit and um, try to see the things that they are doing um, and, and building upon those things um, and not assume that they're so fragile that if they are given support to, to become an anti-racist department, 
um, that that is somehow a knock on them. And I, I just, so that's, that's my comment right now. Jennifer. Uh, yeah, I just want to just throw this out there. It almost feels like the elephant in the room or something, but I mean, people do in any city, town, any place in the world, people do interact with a police department or a police department interacts with people in a different way than any other, you know, municipal department. It's very different than the auditor's office or the IT department or the planning department. The police department can affect your life in, in the most fundamental way possible. So if, yes, we want to, you know, do all that we can to advance and establish an anti-racist culture throughout the town, but if we're starting or with the police department or referencing it, I mean, it's for a reason because they, um, you know, again, it's, it's not IT. Uh, and I think, you know, we can just acknowledge that and have a, con you know, have a conversation about it. And as Michelle said, without, it's not particular to the Amherst Police Department, it's not hurting anybody's feelings, but it would make sense that a police department would certainly be a place you'd you'd want this to happen again more than IT. Anika. Oh, yes, thank you, Jennifer, for that. And I think also um in addition, I don't know how, who of us here is arguing or debating the roots of the police department. Um you know, we, we've seen today, you know, there's, um, you know, an, another incident where we've seen a young, in, in South Georgia, a young uh, Black man attacked by, I believe it was four or five um, officers. I think what we're also seeing here within this motion is that, and what we're hearing is also just the word racist, um, racism in comparison to anti-racist. And with all due respect, I feel that there may be counselors that maybe are not clear on what exactly that difference may be. But also when you look at, and without looking it up, without reading it, but also when you look at the, um, the motion, I can see how um, if you do not understand that difference and there's really no directive to it. So if this is presented in a way as what we're talking about at this police department, APD, being part of the larger, the national police organization as a whole, how, how they have looked at that reluctancy for not just members of the BIPOC community, but as a whole, and that this is asking for, this isn't an accusation, but is just asking for um, just whether whether it be an update. And maybe this is through DEI. For all we know that this could this is already in action. Um, what is going on? So may, maybe it even just starts with clarity around um, anti-racism and what cr that creating that culture is and what is being done. Um, so because these are questions that, you know, I, I do not know. I certainly have not talked to every member of the police department and every member of uh, the Amherst uh, town staff to know what is their understanding of an anti-racist culture, what work or initiatives are going on. And then again, with um, the DEI department. So this could also just be an issue of, of how how it is proposed and really just, I think the key is understanding um, between the difference of being called or accused of being a racist or a racist department as a whole and the idea around the, the questioning around what work is being done to, um, in addition to what's going on to create an anti-racist culture. Thank you. Andy Joe. My concern isn't with the new language about identifying steps to develop a proactive anti-racist culture. We absolutely need to do that in town. That's part of what our resolutions um, th that were in one of the motions and all that we've done the last two years or so, two and a half years, have been leading towards. 
My concern is, and, and I'm gonna say it, the targeting of APD in this motion. Because we could make this same motion for potentially the recreation department for the, um, um, you know, the, you know, our town clerk's office, I could name all of the departments. We could, school department, library department, we could probably make the same motion. We as counselors are not equipped to determine which department this should start at or whether it should start department wide. That's what we hired and created the DEI department to do, to help us do that. And this is taking, this motion takes away our DEI department's discretion and says, you must start with APD. I'm not comfortable telling our DEI department, basically, you must start with APD because I'm not sure that's the right way to go. I'm not sure that's the right method to do one department at a time versus certain services at a time, as our manager was saying. And then I want to push back on um, Councillor Miller's um, belief that our APD might be fragile. We have spent the last two and a half years talking about how we can improve our public safety services in a way to make our town anti-racist, to make our town and our residents feel comfortable contacting public safety and emergencies, whatever that is. We've created two new departments to do that. And through all of that, we have had the support of our APD and our APD chief, and we have lost very few officers because of the work we're doing, because of the support and the strength that our APD department has had in the face of what we as a council have been doing and talking about for two and a half years. That is not fragility in my mind. And I think we should applaud our APD for coming along with us as we make these changes to make our town more anti-racist, to make our town more safe and welcoming for everyone in town. But I just don't think this motion helps. Okay, we're taking a break. Um, we're gonna be a break for five minutes. We'll be back at 11. 32. Turn off your mics. Turn off your picture. I love it. I like it a lot. I'm a big fan. I do love it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to get your car and go? Um, yeah, I hope so, Ken. As long as you think you can connect. Yeah, I can. I'll be on my phone. Have enough key? Yeah. Oh, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Yeah. 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 Y
if you listen to the other two weeks of the patients and the nurse, and then you, you know that the Something nurse said, yeah, we got to not go to the nurse. Alicia's job change, she's got to go to I'm sorry? Alicia's job change, she can make That's what I heard. School babies. I guess, yeah. She needs some time with the new team chair of the meeting to do school babies. So it just made no sense if she doesn't get paid. Well, you have to find your parts for your money. Um, I'm sorry. As you return, please turn your picture back on so I know you're here. And I'm gonna have you take the screen down so I can see. We're we are still on a brief break, but as you return, please put your screen back on so I know you're here. Yeah, I'm showing I'm showing Alicia one way and Anna the other. What? Okay. All right. Uh we're back. Alicia. Maybe she's not back. You know, Alicia, are you back yet? Alicia, are you back? Alicia, are you back yet? Lynn, I don't know if, if um, I, I thought I heard 1135. I think you said five minutes, but I'm just wondering if maybe Alicia. Yeah, I'm, we're going to wait for her. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I am back now. Sorry. One of my kids. Mm -hmm. uh, no problem. Needed my assistance for I just want to make sure that we waited for you. Uh, Thank you. You had a comment. Your hand is up. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry. Let me see if I can really quickly regroup myself. Um. I don't, sorry, I lost my train of thought because I was just running around my house for a minute. But but essentially, I, I just wanted to say that I think that this is a step to take forward that would accomplish a lot of things that we have talked about as a council. Um, I see this as a 
profound and monumental step if we were to do something like this. Um, because like what Jennifer said, the APD is not IT. It's a department that interacts with people on a daily basis outside in the communities, not in offices sitting in a building, directly impacts a lot of people's lives on a daily basis. Um, I think the DEI director, while I, I do agree that this is something I envision that she would be doing, I don't even think that this is directly an initiative that's on her plate right now. And she's working on a lot of other projects. And so would we say that like when she's done with the resident oversight board and the community visioning and all of the other things that she's working on, then she can start working on this or what? I think like we're to a point where we don't, I, I just I just see we're prolonging things. If, if we agree that this is something we want to see happen, I don't see why we can't just make it happen. I don't see it as a negative thing. I don't see how anyone could not benefit from this passing. I think that's also what I my misunderstanding here. I don't I don't see this as something that would negatively impact the APD. I don't see this as something that would negatively impact the community. Um, and I'm sorry, but I can't remember anything else I was going to say. So I will just leave it there. Okay. Anna. We've been discussing this for quite some time. I don't see folks necessarily shifting um, hearts and minds at this point, so I'd like to call the question. Is there a second? Second. Question's been called and seconded. We would move immediately to the vote as to whether or not we're willing to stop debate. Uh, and is there anybody that has a question about the motion to stop debate? Okay, um, I'm gonna start with Michelle Miller. Aye. Uh, Dorothy Pam. Dorothy. Yes. yes, that's fine. Pam Rooney. Yes. Kathy. Yes. Andy. Aye. Jennifer. Yes. Alicia. Yes. Shalini. No. Pat DeAngelis? Aye. Anna? Aye. Lynn is yes. Mandy Joe? Aye. Anika Lopes? Aye. Okay, it's uh, 12 in favor, one opposed, zero, zero. Just stop debate. We're moving immediately to the question. It is the motion on the table, and I'm quickly going to ask that the motion be put up. That's the motion that we're voting on. If you vote yes, it's to support the motion. If you vote no, it's to not support the motion. Uh, I'm going to begin with Dorothy Pam. Uh, yes. Pam Rooney. Yes. Kathy Shane. No. Andy Steinberg. No. Jennifer Taub. Yes. Alicia Walker. Yes. Shalini Balmilne. No. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Anna Devlin Gothier. Aye. Lynn Griesmer is a no. Mandy Jo Haneke. No. Anika Lopes. Yes. Michelle Miller. Aye. Uh, it is. Eight in favor, five opposed. Do I get that right? It passed, Bob. Okay. I have seven, six. I'm sorry. In a motion to work oh, with sorry. the police on the anti racist culture. It passed. Dorothy, you need to mute. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> we'll forgive you, Dorothy. I have I, I I have the following. 
Shalini Bob Milne was a no. Pat D'Angelo, a yes. Anna Devlin Gothier, yes. Uh, Lynn Griesmer, no. Mandy Johanneke, no. Uh, Anika Lopes, yes. Michelle Miller, yes. Dorothy Pam, yes. Uh, Pam Rooney, yes. Kathy Shane, no. Andy Steinberg, no. Jennifer Taub, yes. Alicia Walker, yes. That is eight to five. Okay. All right. That is the end of our meeting and the meeting is adjourned.